<laughs> Oops, I'm here. I'm Are we here? Are we here? Yeah, We're I'm live. Here. <laughs> we uh, we missed Facebook. Let's see. I'm deleting this on Facebook right now so I can see the chat. Um, so save changes broadcast to YouTube. So for all of those that watch on Facebook, we relate. We were late tonight uh, for our TGIF, and so let all your friends know that we're over here on YouTube because uh, Facebook has this really strict rule, and uh, if you don't start within 10 minutes of your start time, they just delete you. So Dang. hello, everyone. Hello, Peppered with Leopard. It's been a long time, Lisa, since we've seen you, and thank you so much for the shirt I'm wearing and for dressing us. Uh, Julie, thanks for being here and everyone just thanks for waiting. We know it's late. We hope you can sleep in tomorrow since it's Friday for those that can't. God bless you. I, I, I know what it's like to work on Saturdays too. Uh, I had another guest that I was preparing for tonight, uh, and that fell through and, and I just, I'm sharing this story because Julie Holden is a trooper. She has been collecting Lori. Or she has been collecting Tammy Daybell research for quite a while. I'm passionate about Tammy's life, and I've seen that uh, sort of happen with Julie as she's delved into. <gasps> you have the mug. Look at this toast <laughs> to TGIF. <laughs> Don't look at my nails. I need to cut them, paint them, something. Oh gosh, but I won't. But I need to. But I won't. Anyway, um, when my guest canceled tonight. It wasn't Hel Lori Hellis. It was for a different case. But when I guest canceled tonight, I reached out to Julie and said, Julie, that research uh, that you did for Tammy Daybell, would you be willing to share it tonight? And she said, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let me gather my thoughts. Let me gather my thoughts. Needless to say, uh, Julie Holden has been gathering her thoughts for the past few hours. We were a little bit late, but it's because um, I know that she's prepared something incredible for us, I'm sure. So with that being said, um, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to talk more about Tammy. Tammy is someone we don't always get to talk about. And the reason is, um, respectfully, her family has requested privacy and they have hoped for justice and made that very clear and have shared a statement or two. But other than that, they're a private family, which I fully understand. Thus, we don't know as much about Tammy as we do other victims in this case. Um, but what I continue to learn about Tammy myself um, touches my heart. And I also shared a tribute to her in our Chad Daybell podcast episode. I'll oh, yeah. find out. But... Um, it was, it even said tribute in the, in the title, it's tribute to Tammy Daybell. Tammy Daybell was Chad Daybell's wife. Ch Tammy Daybell died uh, October, 2019 in her, allegedly in her sleep. No autopsy was performed. We're going to talk about all that. We'll talk about all of it. And now Chad Daybell is charged in his wife's death. For those new to the Daybell case, I know we have a lot of new people on the Daybell case with us tonight because people are following the Rebecca Barsotti case with us. So hopefully that was a good basic um, introduction. Um, in addition to that, two children were killed, JJ and Tylee, buried in Chad's yard. They were killed before Tammy died. And, uh, and buried in her yard. Well, and buried in her yard before she died. Alive. Yep. Yeah, I, I can't imagine. And, and uh, Charles Vallow was also killed. Charles Vallow's widow then married Chad Daybell after Tammy died. So five children, very, very tragic. I can't imagine that, you know, raising five children with a man, being married nearly 30 years, and it ended allegedly in this. We'll see. No char uh, charges have been uh, filed, but no, um, you know, uh, we'll see what happens. No justice yet, but trial. No conviction. Out. Right, right. So with that being said... Uh, one more time, toast TGIF and Fridays are for speculation. <laughs> They're also for a lot of facts. There's They're also not for a lot, a lot of facts. In this. You know me. Oh, and while we're on the topic, um, I have a list of 
all of my sources per slide that we'll have to figure out whether we're going to put it on the comment uh, on the description of this video or publish it separately somewhere. I don't know, but I, okay. it, I'm and very how can everyone here, I am. Julie. Uh, Julie's a little quiet for me, Ooh. but I don't know how it is for everybody else. Oh, you it can't hear me very well. Me. I can get some earbuds. Well, don't do it yet. It could just be me truly. Um, so okay. don't change anything anything if it's working well for everybody else. We'll, I don't we'll have chat pulled up, so you'll have to I have know. chat, so we'll wait. There's a little bit of a lull. We'll wait to see what people are saying if you're loud enough. I, I mean, StreamYard usually balances out. So, oh yeah, yeah. everyone's hearing. See, it's okay. just me. Okay, okay, cool. So go ahead and I don't out. have your screen, by the way. It's you down. Don't? Yeah. Okay, let me so try again. I think you went, you so yeah sorry uh, everyone no no that's okay it's a nice slideshow that's ready to go there it is yep bo peep i love that too i know none of us are perfect but tammy struck me as a saint you know i know and people say there are no perfect victims and i i'm half serious here half joking so no one take me too serious right now but if anybody is a saint if anyone is a perfect victim when it comes to the dayball case it might be, you know, Tammy, of course, and the children too. So that's why I'm just, it's a figure of speech too, that I'm saying, but she, she, from everything I've learned was a very kind person and mm -hmm. dude, she put up with Chad Daybell. That's, that's all you need to know. You know, and to be clear, this is, this is really just a hyper, hyper focus on, Hey, John, can you, thank you. I'm sorry. My cat is completely insufferable. <laughs> Um, when he scratches himself, it shakes the table. At any rate, <laughs> now he's attacking my husband. But anyway, um, this is a hyper, hyper focus on um, the, the day that she died and the days following her death. That's what we're talking about today. Thank you. Yeah. Do you want me to share your screen? Yeah, please. All right. Um, All right. So for Tammy today, for Tammy. Mm -hmm. Let's see. All right. So this is what we're going to go over today. The predictions that Tammy was going to die, um, the day that she died, the several days following her death, the day that her body was exhumed, and the day that the autopsy report was released, well, wasn't released, was given to law enforcement, let's put it that way. Yeah. And she was only 49. I just saw her birthday there, 1970, May the yeah. 4th, 1970. Yeah. Pretty crazy, right? Mm -hmm. She was so young. Yeah. 49. So in the months, possibly even years before her death, Chad Daybell predicted that she would die. He shared this prediction with many people. And sorry, but that's a good case for scare quotes if ever there was. So um, here are the many predictions that Chad gave that Tammy was going to die. Uh, first of all, he texted Lori. I got the inspiration to go back to my original death percentages that helped us track Charles, Ned, etc. Tammy is very close. Her percentages have fallen steadily since Hiblos left. Iblos left. It is yeah, encouraging. Yeah, that H is silent. That H is silent. <laughs> Don't let Melanie Gibb hear me pronounce that H. So, um, yeah, kind of horrifying, honestly. Chad rubbing his hands, being so happy that her death percentage has... Right. Not only is she going to die, we have death percentages. It's just, I can't yeah. imagine someone talking to me yeah. like that. Thank you, Peppered with Leopard. And then Chad himself wrote, he had a recurring column in the Avow kind of newsletter. They called it their global initiative newsletter. I don't know if it went out in email. I kind of feel like it might have since it's called a newsletter, but as far as I know online, only the first part of it is available. If anybody has that, that newsletter following what I've put here, uh, please send it to Lauren because I don't, I, EIN even sent out a, you know, kind of almost an all points bulletin. Hey, send us the second half of this newsletter if you have it because they don't have it either. That but, and the train dream. Those are the two things. Yes. yes the train exactly. dream. I've never been able to find the full thing. And this as well. If Yeah. If anybody has the full half, we know we have a lot of avow members or ex avow members. If yeah. anyone has that, ask your friends, send the them dream, to hidden oh, true crime, hidden true crime info at, at gmail.com. Gmail, right. Yeah. Hidden true crime info at gmail.com. Um, 
that was actually also in his as I see it column. So if you were an avowal member and you can search your Gmail, put as I see it in direct quotes, maybe it'll pull all of those up. But anyway, he said, um, and I know this is awkward, but this is how it was written after she died. Tammy conveyed to me several messages in, and then it's like dot, dot. And I don't know if it's weird. That's how EIM published it. It's how everybody published it. But anyway, Tammy conveyed to me several messages. I'm in the process of implementing what she has told me to do. She has indicated that my life has two parts that were planned even before I came to earth. She was meant to, and I think that's probably, she was meant to be in the first half. Because he talks about this two parts all the time and implies that the second part of his life was when he married Lori. Okay, yeah, right. And I want to say, you know, in his autobiography, oddly, it's written to, it's to Tammy, his one and only. Mm -hmm. So it seems as if that sort of switches. Is that? Yeah, that came up a lot in my research. Suzanne mentioned it, that he said that she was the, the one and only love of his life. He referred to her as that for many, many years. It seems like two, two, maybe three years before, um, well, he allegedly murdered her. Uh, he started talking about this. My life is in two parts and Tammy's going to die. We'll get into that even more. He said it a lot. Um, and then uh, when he was talking with Melanie Gibb, when she called and recorded her conversation with him, Lori and Chad were on the phone. He said, all these conspiracy theories just make me sick to my stomach. Just absolutely sick. I know I've been told for years that Tammy would pass away at a young age. It's nice to know that Chad thinks 40, what was she, 47, 48? 49. All right. Anyway, at a young age. And I had no idea that Lori would even be part of my life. I just knew that my life had two segments and that I knew I know Tammy's on a special mission and she's with my kids. She's visited them. That's, that's what uh, he said to Melanie. Gibb. And you know what? Also to say, well, I know these conspiracy theories, these conspiracy theories are bunk because I've been told for years, almost just like if I've had voices in my head telling me, which is essentially his own voice telling him that she's going to die. Mm -hmm. Then thus everything else is a conspiracy theory because his random voice is more certain than anything. I just, the idea of that just makes my head roll. So oh, I mean, it's, 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 it's hard to keep my anger in check when I was doing this research, but I wanted, I really, I wanted to honor Tammy and I wanted to put this all in one place because it's scattered all over the place and putting it together in one specific place is, is pretty, it's pretty interesting. Somewhat mix a lot. I love uh, exactly two parts of his life before and after he murdered his wife. Yeah. And, uh, and then Denny Lenny asks something I think we've all been curious about. Was Tammy aware that Chad was predicting her death? I don't believe she was ever. I've, I've talked to a lot of people that heard the prediction, but not Tammy. Yeah. I, I kind of doubt it, but I have no way of knowing yeah, he it's yeah, it's gonna be determined, right? Yeah. We'll, we'll know, I'm sure, during the trial. I don't believe she did, though. I feel like he said it to people who would be unlikely to repeat it to her. I agree. He he shared it with people who had his belief system, who had his belief system, and who potentially were maybe even love interests or people that he was having affairs with. Because we have heard that he had multiple affairs. It's that's unverified. I have confirmed. Heard. I have confirmed from a very good source that he's had multiple affairs, and I've heard that one of these women was in Arizona. Wow. Yeah. So there you go. There's your tea. Spill the tea. Eric Smith said in the interview with you, in fact, if one mm -hmm. of the mods is able to pull up the link and put that in chat, that would be cool. I know that's a bit of an ask. Sorry, I should have had the link ready myself, but no worries. I could try to find it. Go ahead. In his interview with you, Eric said, I did hear talk of Tammy passing a good year, maybe two years before that, that he saw that as something that was coming. I would just take notes here and there, write in my journal and kind of record stuff, little snippets. And that was something that was talked about once in a while. So Eric Smith is the only person who I found said it, it, that, that this went on for years. You could track when he talked to Julie Rowe about it probably back a couple of years as well, but he very specifically states that Chad had been saying that for a couple of years. 
Yes. Um, I remember specifically asking him, um, that was a really interesting point in that interview with me. And I, I, I yeah. am pulling it up right now. Oh, sorry. Oh, but, uh, I said, you know, people said Tammy was going to die. And he said, yeah, I heard that. And then he said he had heard Julie talk about her husband, Jeff, Julie yes. Rowe. You're the yes. good Julie, but Julie Rowe, um, you know, about his wife dying and, yep. He had not oh, heard Joel Gervine. Joel Gervine? His wife was going to he die. The only one he had heard of was Julie Rose saying her husband was going to die. But Girl on Fire was the one that said that Joel said his wife was going to die. Yeah. Right. Right. And that is in Julie Rowe, cult leader, spiritual healer, the in interview with Girl on Fire. Right. She said Joel Gervine's wife was going to die. That's what Joel told her as mm -hmm. he was trying to seduce her. So. Not a trend. Hashtag not a trend. Yeah. Right. Um, this uh, next one was in the Idaho press and I thought it was very interesting. I don't know who Angela Stone is. It describes who she is here in the quote. East Eastern Idaho resident Angela Stone is the first person from one of these divergent religious groups to publicly talk about the group with Rexburg ties. Stone says she was groomed by this group and was once a part of it. It's not the Mormonism that 90 to 95 percent of the church believes and practices, she told Dateline. I heard that Chad believed that his wife was supposed to have died in a car accident and she was now inhabited by a zombie, by an evil spirit, doesn't have control of herself and is detrimental to the work of God. Whoever Angela Stone is, she told Dateline that. Wow. She's killing a lot of people. But again, I don't really know that this is... Um, Angela Stone. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I don't know that this got back to Tammy, but she told Dateline that. Hmm. Um in may of 2020 okay melanie gibb addresses this let's see if these will play oh Gibbs. oh dear let's try again um, thank you tara for posting the girl on fire interview as well play. those are two interviews that talk about these eric's interview and then mm -hmm. girl on fire's interview both talk about oh. these predictions of deaths of spouses let me see if i can pull up group what uh what melanie said i don't know that i'm gonna be able to pull both of them up but i can for sure read you one of them um sorry that these videos they're embedded they should work Just... we've had those problems before i'm so sorry we should have um, tested no it's okay it's just that they're embedded it's really odd well one of the things she said was, Nate said, uh, in September, Lori moves. She tells you that she needs to go up there. And what was your reaction about Chad telling her she needs to come up there, knowing that Chad still has the wife and five kids? And Melanie says, yeah, well, we talked about that. I'm like, isn't it going to be awkward? She was uncomfortable with it. She believed Tammy was going to pass away, though, before she got up there. And that didn't happen. She didn't pass away before she got up there. And so I thought, you know, I said, aren't you uncomfortable? Maybe he'll see. She'll see you guys together. And so I thought that was different, you know, that she was going to be up there when he was, when she was, when Tammy was still alive. Uh, Nate says, and she told you, well, Tammy will die before I move up there? Melanie says, right. How is she going to die? I have, I have, I, I, I heard a few times maybe through a car wreck or something like that. So they taught Tammy would die in a car crash. Yeah. Would pass right. away, yeah. then Lori would move up there and she could marry Chad. Melanie says, mm-hmm. And when that didn't happen, she said, I've still got to go. And Melanie says, yeah, because, you know, the other side of the veil she was talking to, she says, uh, I need to be there by this date. And then eventually Melanie says, I can't recall if Chad said it, but I know Lori did. He was very quiet most of the time. He let her do most of the talking. Claire Mack brings up something interesting. I just want to point this out. She said, remember that ex-friend? That would be Anna. Yes. Who said the Daybells came over for family night. They just met and Chad just stood up and took over with his speech about his, I'll add, his near-death experience. And Tammy was there, right? Yes, she was there. Yes. Uh, but I have but no I doubt just, that she knew even, about all of his beliefs. Yeah, she knew about that. Well, not all of them, but... Correct. A lot of those basic ones. I mean, I didn't, you know, those aren't necessarily basic, but you know what I mean? She, mm -hmm. I do believe that she believed in the near death experience and Anna did. So what I was going to say is Anna had not heard that Tammy was going to die either. 
and her whole family was there. So she couldn't believe that. Yeah. Liz, thanks. Thanks a lot, Liz. Liz is pointing out that I'm twinning with twinning with Melanie Gibb there. And then, um, Bo Peep, she's bringing <laughs> something. You know. I took it off that page. Thanks, Liz. Thanks. Uh, Bo Peep is saying that, uh, she watched the interview. Oh, that she wants to know where Colby referred to Chad as a prophet. And I know that this is off tangent. So bear, this is a tangent. I can so tell you. Well, I, well, yeah, go ahead. I know where it is too, but I don't think he's what, I don't think he's saying it's Chad. Correct. I feel pretty strongly about that. Correct. Correct. I watched it and he's referring, she's just referring to a prophet, like the prophet of the LDS church. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, I think what Lori Hellis was referring to, there's a very interesting article with a woman who was in jail at the same time as Lori before she, excuse me, was found incompetent. And she said that Lori said that Colby was frustrated with Lori and Lori said something like the prophet said to stay off social media to Colby. And it is vague who this, who, who Lori might be referring to when she told Colby that the prophet said to stay off social media. One could take that to mean Lori meant that Chad said to stay off social media, or one could take that to mean the prophet of the LDS church. It's just not clear at all. I believe that's what Lori was referring to when she said that Colby said that Chad was a prophet, but I don't know. Yeah. If you look up, I, I put the link, I think in chat when we were discussing it last week. Yes, it's you did. Well, and I, and I want to say this, my opinion, um, cause I went and watched it too. The reason why I was so interested is because I believe that Chad was a prophet, that he believed he was a prophet. Right. You John, don't believe he was Dr. a prophet. John, he believed he was a prophet. Right. Dr. John believes he was a prophet. You're right. We believe that he believed. Thank you yep. for adding that extra. We believe yep. that he believed. Yes. That's how we see him. And we, we refer to him as a prophet type. But what's yes. interesting is we've gotten flack for, I want to point out, and there is something really interesting in this case, is I can't find a single place where Chad calls himself a prophet. Neither can I. He and, and calls I himself a founder. He calls himself a leader. He calls himself the head, you know, um, exalted. I think what he was implying was a prophet, and he might have said that in, pro in private, but I find that a very interesting piece of this, a part of this case, is that uh, they never say that Chad is a prophet. They'll say the prophet is of the LDS church has been led astray. They'll say that they're starting the church of the firstborn, that he's the founder, that he has visions, that he's a visionary, that he knows to follow him, but there's never that term. And so that's why I was so interested in it. John and I will still say that Chad believes he was a prophet, mm -hmm. but it's, it's not clear that they called him a prophet. And so yeah. I just wanted to make that clear as i've watched that interview i really don't see it like that i see them referring to the prophet of the lds church yeah in that interview just i agree and if folk people wants to look up that um oh gosh i wish i could remember which news source it was it wasn't i don't think it was even a tabloid but if she wants to look up uh like uh the the, the jailmate uh of of lori of lori that's i i think that's what lori house was referring to um, yeah. And thank you, Leah Clayton. Why didn't anyone report this then? Is it that they were too scared to question it? And it was because of the, under the protection of the religious beliefs banner. I think that nobody was scared. I think this was normal protocol for this group. I think he didn't share it with people that didn't believe. I think they were very careful who they shared it with, in my opinion. But um, and if Lee question, hasn't though. seen your interview with Bernadine, uh, that gives a lot of insight into what the uh, Rexburg... Um, culture for this specific group was like, I'm not saying all of Rexburg is like that, but, but Bernadine gives a pretty good, a, a sort of a encapsulation of um, this, this very tight knit uh, community of people, like-minded people with Chad. Yeah. And um, I think Leanne Hicks makes good a great question. point. None of us have been able to figure out why he was traveling to Arizona to help a friend with construction. Was he visiting his mistress? interesting i know right thank you leanne for that addition to this chat thank you thank you okay thank so you. predictions of tammy's death we have a whole slide and this isn't even a drop in the bucket of how many times julie rowe talked about chad saying tammy was going to die i just 
fell down a rabbit hole here and tried to pull myself back up because it was overwhelming how many times she refers to it on all different kinds of news sources. I think she said it on Nancy Grace as well. I'm not even sure, but she talked about it a lot. So these are the quotes I pulled because you got to pick something. So she said when Eric Smith interviewed her and you uh, pulled this into your interview with Eric Smith, that whole interview with Eric Smith and Julie Rowe is jaw dropping. This was before the kids were found when Julie was coming out and saying, I know Chad Daybell's heart. I know he's a good man. Um, December 2019, very early on in all of this, she said, I asked him three weeks before she died. Chad, are you seeing, are you still seeing Tammy dying? And he said, yes, but I don't know how. And I don't remember what else he said about it other than I said I had been asking too. And then my angel said, yes, she's going to go. She's almost graduated from mortality. And excuse me, Julie Rowe says several times in other sources that she also saw. Sorry, I've got indigestion tonight. Excuse me. That she also saw Tammy club. dying. <laughs> uh, that her angel told her Tammy was going to die. It's really, I, I it's really, it bothers me a lot. It's, that Julie Rowe video is chilling. For those that really did join the case later. Oh, thank just, you, Tara. This was, um, yeah, thank you, Tara. This was the the introduction to the case almost for me. So I, I had heard it in the AP. It came down the, you know, in, in AP and I'd been following it from the very beginning. And it was December 26th. And my I remember it so clearly. My parents were visiting for Christmas. And the very next day, this someone said a Julie Rowe interview. I had no idea who Julie Rowe was. No idea. This was my introduction to her. I get on this interview and my jaw just drops. Here yeah. she is with this gentleman, Eric Smith. I didn't know who he was. It was my introduction to him too. And she is saying that I know Chad Davil is innocent. My angels have told me and that he's always been predicting her death. And my my mind was blown. I had my dad listen to the whole thing. He was like, what in the world? So that will always be that <laughs> chilling moment for me. That video was it's my introduction funny, to both Eric and dad, Julie. What in the world? Wouldn't anybody feel that way about Julie Rowe? What the heck? <laughs> oh, I was, whew, my mind was blown. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a very unsettling interview. Um, and again, with my, uh, with my, uh, my very carefully maintained uh, list of links, I have the, the URLs for all of this stuff. Okay. Thank you, Double Rainbow, and thank you, Liz. Um, so I did get John Glatt's book, and I read it, and, and it, it's problematic in some ways in that it's very, um, let's just say it's very high level. Let's just put it that way. People who have really dug down into this case will find things in John Glatt's book where you're like, I'm not sure that's right. But it's a, I will recommend it for people who don't know the case, especially uh, any new, new uh, HTC people who aren't familiar with the case. It's a good, it's a really breezy read. It's easy to read. He's a nice guy. It's a, it's a it's a good overview, you know, as far as that goes. So here's what John had to say in his book. Uh, Chad told, it, it, John did interview Julie. He, he uh, talked to her a couple times, I think. Chad told Julie about a vision he had of Tammy dying in a car accident. He saw her driving their black pickup truck, which I don't know if they had a black truck, pickup truck, but anyway, in a heavy snowstorm and skidding on ice into a telephone pole. It was the first of three visions of Tammy dying that he would tell Roe about. So first of all, one thing that occurs to me is that is a horrifying thing to imagine. That's just stomach churning. And secondly, three, he gave Julie three different times that he saw Tammy dying. I mean, well, okay, take what you will from that. And then the other one was, Julie is quoted. I said to him, do you still see Tammy dying? Remembered Bro, And he said, yes, I wouldn't be surprised if she died in her sleep. Wow. Wow. So went from a car act about a car crash to dying yep. Yep. in the sleep. How quickly things change. Oh, those, those visions are great. Those predictions are great, Chad. Yeah. How am I going to murder her? Jeez. Right. And I have always wondered if he tampered with her car before he sent her off to go see her family. We'll never know, but what I have heard is that he, he urged her to go and drive those, how many hours is it? Four Six? I don't remember from Rexburg back to, I think it, well, someone in chat will remember, but it's, it's a long drive. And he, it, it, I think it was after she was shot at, but before she was allegedly murdered um, was when I believe she went and saw her family back in Utah. And then the last Julie Rowe quote is, 
He really felt like she was going to pass away last fall between October and December, Bro said, adding that the two of them were having marital problems. What he had told me in February was that he and Tammy were tied on money and he was doing his best to keep his marriage together. And the chat is blocking the rest of it, but, um, oh, Colette is Colette. Yeah. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Oh yeah. I, <laughs> yeah Colette true. is not Chad. But <laughs> well, look, Julie said all this stuff. I'm just directly quoting what I found uh, in various news sources, uh, trying desperately to keep his marriage together. So she said that in February of 2020, again, very early in the case. Again, this is before the, the children were found. Um, Interesting. They were tight on money and he was doing his best to keep his marriage together. And did he actually tell her that exact timeline? Well, sometime between October, and December. And, and yeah, and interesting. They're having marital problems. We do know that Tammy suspected a affair. We know well, that. I, I think I think that Charles told her. That's for another live. I, that's another one that I've been doing a very, very deep dive into. And I think yeah. that he told her. I, I right, do. But either way, we know that Melanie Gibb has said it multiple times that yeah. Tammy suspected. That that yeah. comes from Melanie Gibb more than once. And then I just, this is a TGIF comment. I have to throw Colette Cox's comment back on there. It made me giggle. <laughs> Speaking of Julie Rowe. <laughs> Uh, it is true. This this introduction to Julie Rowe over Christmas of 2019, when she's shouting that Chad always said his wife was going to die, and my mind was blown. Who knew that a year later she'd be mentioning me on a on a video titled "Julie Rowe is P I S S E D." So <laughs> it is true. That was a moment too. I was at home, and someone said, uh, "Julie Rowe's mentioning you, uh, Lauren Matias, on uh, yeah. her video." So that was a moment. <laughs> That's when I knew I had arrived. I actually wrote that to Kay Woodcock too. And she wrote me, she's like, Julie Rose mentioning you. And I'm like, I have arrived. Been mentioned. <laughs> By Julie Rose. Hey mom, look, guess what? Julie Rose knows who I am. Just kidding. That's not a, that's not a great thing, but you know what I mean? Yeah. We had a laugh about it. Thank you, Colette. Go ahead. Uh, we, DJ Trap we Boy. Gotta, we're talking about the Daybell Vallow case. You got to laugh or cry. And I'll tell you what with this stuff. All right, so the day that Tammy died, um, a Saturday, Tamara, Tammy, Douglas, Dabel passed away pe peacefully in her sleep on Saturday, October 19th, 2019 in Salem, Idaho. That is from the obituary that was published. Yeah, there. Okay. That she was, was and that was day. from, that was from what did you say? The, that was from the obituary. He has I, I don't so have this in the words. slideshow, but one of your guests, if I remember correctly, Somewhere, someone said they were, might have been, I don't know who it was, was really surprised by how quickly that that uh, very robust um, obituary was turned around. Oh, it was. It was very robust, and it was turned around fast. She was she was buried. She had her funeral in, in a different state in two days. Oh, yeah. We'll get to it. I mean, I wrote my mother's obituary, and my mother had been in failing health for years, and it took me a week. Like, I, I, I didn't, I didn't crank. It's, to honor someone's life, I, it just the way the person who said they were surprised by how quickly that obituary came out implied that maybe Chad had done some writing ahead of time. Carrie Livingston, I agree. The part where Chad says Tammy had a smile is so anger-inducing. Oh, it's in here. Don't worry. We'll get to it. Yeah. And so anyway, that's from LDS Avow. He states, because his story changes, so I want to just point this oh, we'll out get to it. one we'll more get time. To it. it was clear she had been gone for several hours. You've Don't highlighted worry. that. We're getting to that. That's why this is a, a hyper-focused uh, um, look at this. DJ Trap Boy. Sorry I didn't uh, slow down the chat, but please stop writing the same thing over and over again. If that happens, everyone, feel free to block him. Go ahead. Oh, oh. Yeah, that happened last week, too. I, just ign My advice to Chad is to ignore any unpleasantries that get spammed. Well, he's asking an okay question. He's asking an okay question, but it's hard to ignore because oh. there's like 30 of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's called spamming the chat. Yeah. Um, all right. So when Tammy was initially discovered deceased, um, here's what Chad, we're, we're circling back around to that. Uh, he started, he started news called it an S essay. Sorry. My cat will always wreak it every time I try to be on TGIF. Now he's destroying something. <laughs> um, they call it an essay. I would call it, well, I guess it's an essay. It was a running newsletter. He, the, as I see it was his column. I would call it a column in his 
I don't know how often they publish the newsletter, weekly, monthly column, as I see it, that Chad wrote for Aval for their um, global initiative newsletter. He said, when I woke around 6 a.m., it was clear she had been gone for several hours. It came as a shock. I couldn't believe I hadn't been awakened somehow, but all indications are that her spirit simply slipped away during the night. Her face looked serene with her eyes closed and a slight smile. It was devastating to discover her that way, but I'm so grateful that her death was peaceful. That's what uh, someone had mentioned made them very angry. Yeah, Carrie Livingston said that. It is rage and yes, to say agree, And Carrie. she was smiling. Completely. She was happy to be murdered. Don't worry. I mean, I don't know if he's convincing himself there or just being a uh, word I can't say. Hello, well, Larry Woodcock. Oh, hi, Larry. Well, to um, me, honestly, the fact that he published this in a weekly or monthly newsletter that gets distributed to all of our members is creepy as heck to me. Yes. I just, I'm flabbergasted by it. I'd love to know whether that was, as I see it, was weekly or monthly. Even her face looking serene, you know, just, oh, come on. Her eyes closed with a slight smile. Really quickly, Larry Woodcock, and that could mean Larry and Kay, Kay or Larry. We're just happy to see Larry Woodcock's name here. Um, yes, says, Hello, Papa, Larry Woodcock. Um, we learned today, and I have not talked to the Woodcocks at all, but we learned today that um, JJ's biological mother, Mandy, has passed away. Uh, it was heartbreaking. I heard that right before the live and maybe we should have mentioned that earlier. I, I don't know any details, but, uh, may she rest in peace. And for our believers, um, here, you know, we hope, and I hope that she is uh, with JJ, you know, there in heaven. So <sighs> yes. Yeah, anyway, I wanted to let everyone know that. Um, I don't know the details, but, um, Mandy is her name. And uh, it's JJ's mother, and she has passed away. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm very sorry. I'm, I was just really floored when I heard that, and it's very, very, very tragic and sad news. Yes. And it is Larry and Kay, and they're in New Orleans tonight. Okay. Understandable. Okay, so um, in a report... So, you know, these reports make filter. Yes. Yes, absolutely. The Woodcock family is in, is in my prayers as well. Sending them up tonight. Um, these reports, you know, make their way, bounce back and forth between Rexburg. And well, this is before, this is all in, in Arizona anyway, but um, well, right. This would, have, this would have been reported to Arizona from Rexburg because we don't have FOIA documents for Idaho. But Ryan Pillar with Gilbert wrote that what he was told, and it's probably pretty accurate because it probably came from the 911 tapes. Uh, Chad Daybell called to report that his wife, Tammy, fell out of bed and was deceased. No physical trauma was observed on Tammy and an autopsy was not completed. I'm glad that at least they didn't say, and she had a slight smile and looked serene. I know. Uh, I'd be... I'd be very curious to hear that 911 call. I don't think it's ever been released. I would be curious to hear if Chad said on the 911 call, my wife fell out of bed and she's dead. What did he say? I, I'm That would be quite an interesting FOIA request. Right. It, it really, really would. What did he say on that 911 call? And they're holding it. You know, we've received a lot of evidence and, and the evidence surrounding Tammy's death has been held pretty tight which is important because that trial hasn't happened yet so i get it i do i get it, it, it they gotta they gotta keep keep uh keep things tightly sealed so that they can put a case together without a bunch of noise coming in um i'm sure we all remember the 48 hours interview with the five day bell children uh gar said i was asleep and i heard a thump and i no, that's important i was asleep and i heard a thump and i heard my dad yell garth garth come in quick 48 hours says Garth found his mother, 49 year old Tammy Daybell, lying half on the bed, half on the floor. Garth says, I just ran over and picked her up and put her back on the bed. I said to my dad, I said, I think she's dead. My dad was just pacing back and forth and just saying, Why? How could this happen? Pointing at pictures on the wall. She can't be dead. Like, how could this be? What do we do? So 
this directly contradicts that Chad woke up and Tammy was just asleep and, well, dead in the bed with a smile on her face. This says there was a thump. A much different story. This says that he called Garth in immediately and was in a panic. I don't know. What time of day did this happen? We don't know. Yeah, this is an interesting moment for me. There is a lot of speculation here, but Garth said he heard a thump. And this is for 48 hours. Uh, let me share this too. Like 48 hours didn't happen for quite a while. When was it done? Um, oh, I should have put the date in. I'm sorry. I don't there were, know. No, it's okay. But it there was were recently. A lot of, it was 2021 for sure. It was 2021. There were a lot of rumors already. Mm -hmm. We already knew at this point that Garth's mother-in-law, he got married after his um, all yep. of the crimes occurred, but we knew that his mother-in-law was a witness at the grand jury. We're going to get that to that. Okay, so I won't say much more about that then, but I, um, the next slide. I just feel like Garth might have really rehearsed that story for 48 yeah. hours because the rumors were already flying that he might have moved a body. So yeah, yeah so go ahead. I just this. feel like this was really rehearsed. I read I your mind, Lauren. Lauren and I have okay. not talked today, by the way. I was in my little rabbit hole putting my slides together as fast as I could. Seriously, like when the guest canceled, I wrote her, and we have not talked since we got on together. For this. Pounding on the keyboard. Uh, so, unverified, unverified, unverified. Um, and... Lauren, if you could eventually clear the bottom of the screen from the, I know, how could you have we'll do. The frothing at the mouth? I agree, too, Becky. Becky Carter. We that was a great there. comment. It is a great yeah. comment. It's a Pleasant great comment. smile while frothing at the mouth. Yeah, yeah. no, really. So um, I have a confidential story that I'm not going to say who wrote this. I'm not going to say where it was written. This is just something that I found on Facebook. I'll tell you that much. I have a confidential source with ties to Garth Daybell's wife. They said that Chad called Garth the night Tammy died and asked him to help move Tammy's body to the bed after she was dead to make it look like she died in her sleep. Later, a family member overheard them talking about the events from that night and reached out to the FBI. It's refreshing to hear about an ethical family member who put truth and justice for a victim first. As always, these are allegations, not facts supported by evidence. Please remember not to state as a matter of fact that Garth aided his father in moving his mom's body. I verified as much as I can verify. There was a footprint, so to speak, in a document that contained this family member's name. That said, this account aligns with some of the accounts, with some people's account that Garth was working at the haunted house the night Tammy died and received a call that <laughs> my own thing is covering it up. I think it was that she was sick. Oh, I left early. I put a screenshot that I put together of from, if you see it, it's kind of small on the side of the screen, but this is from Wednesday, September 11th, 2019, where the Haunted Mill in Rexburg said, you know, we're looking for individuals with a unique set of skills. Do you have what we're looking for? Apply today. There's a URL for looking for employment. And uh, Garth was at tagged on that thread, his future wife. Uh, Ky Kyra, I think is her name, was at tagged on that thread. I found a lot, a lot of footprints indicating that Garth definitely worked in a haunted house in twenty. Kira, yeah, his. I Kira, believe his wife was Kira. Yes, I have too found a lot of evidence. So I, I concur with your findings. So there's two of us that he was working at a haunted house, and perhaps Kira was there too. Mm -hmm. And so there's this possibility that that those were the rumors before 48 hours. I want to yes. say too. These oh, are yeah. exactly what I was saying. These rumors were already going before their appearance in August of 21. Tara, find, help. Thank you for finding that date. Or was it Keir, Carrie Livingston? Thank you for finding that date. Uh, August 2021 was when they appeared. These rumors, all of this was being said before that 48 hours. And so I do suspect this is Fridays are for speculation <laughs> that, <It's laughs> that uh, he knew he sort of, he needed to make some sort of PR statement about that Sh set a story that would make sense. You know? Yeah. It was well before I I'll, I'll look up the date of this particular, um, Facebook item. <laughs> Sorry. I, I live in a menagerie and my dog is being weird. Uh, and, and put it on the links if I get a chance, but yeah, it was, it was well before the 48 hours again, unverified, what you see is what you get. That's what I found. Thank you, Lynette. Yeah. 
Um, that was a, what a great show. Thank you. Always a great show with Julie Holden and her work. <laughs> Thank you. I, I have seen a photo of, of uh, somewhere online, somewhere on Facebook of Garth heavily made up and it's kind of a scary clown uh, costume uh, that's been verified to be Garth. I, I think it's, it's pretty much accepted fact that he worked at the, um, at the haunted mill, whether or not he was called early to go home because his mother was not well. I suppose that'll come out at trial. Uh, Rex LaRue has a great comment. People don't slip away unless yes. they're in a coma. The human body fights death. Yes. Years of experience working in the hospital. We saw that with Alex Cox as well. And and you're right. She was 49 and doing Zumba the day before. Yeah. So, or maybe not the day before, but the week before. Uh, Del Pace has shared a couple of times that your delivery might be a little too fast. Um, oh, sorry. I do talk too fast. I'm so sorry. I live in Texas. Know, and you know what? Mostly she is just talk in... slow, but I'll try to slow it down. Thanks, Del. Yeah. Thanks, Del. I, I don't mind that kind of feedback at all. <laughs> right, right. We're all figuring this out together. So we want to be able to present it well. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And and thanks, Rex LaRue, for that that point that you said. Yeah, it, it, would, it would not be a serene death with a smile on her face. No, I have experience with my elderly parents passing away and it takes a while. It yeah. does. And thank you, Lori Wallace, for reminding people to give us a thumbs up. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, moving on. There are a couple of different reports of Emma uh, saying that Tammy had pink foam. One of them is from Julie Rowe. But I liked this one from Crime Online a little bit better because it's not Julie Rowe. <laughs> um, Mandy Fowler worked at the same elementary school where Tammy Daybell was a librarian. Fowler also said she spoke to Emma Murray, because uh, Emma's married to uh, Murray. Uh, that's Emma Daybell, though, Emma Daybell Murray, after her mother's death and claimed Emma shared concerns about the condition of Tammy's body when she was found dead. According to the friend, Emma said that Tammy had pink foam coming from her mouth. Everyone has the pink foam in this case, too. Can we just say that? Everyone. Well, I will say, because as, as you all know, I'm a pretty uh, keen studier of, of, you know, the, the, the medical legal death investigator, um, Joseph Scott Morgan. The, the frothy edematous cone it, it simply means that the lungs have have there's bleeding and um, edema. Um, the lungs are full. They, they're full of liquid and blood. It, it's quite a few things can cause it, but yes, there's a lot of pink foam. Right, Liz? I know. I like what Liz says. Yeah. Pink foam and yet peaceful. How about this too? Um, <laughs> we know that asphyxiation yet peaceful. Right. Oh, we'll get to that too. Yeah. <laughs> it's all in here, Lauren. <laughs> I put it all in one spot. And I would be happy to share the slideshow with you. Maybe you could put it on Patreon if people would like to go. I would it. love that. I would love to slowly. put it on Patreon. <laughs> oh, as well as a few things we won't have time to share here tonight. Some photos and some interesting articles about Tammy Daybell. Mm -hmm. So after this, we'll put this, uh, we'll put the link on, on uh, Patreon as well as this PDF. Thank you. Um, and then sure. these Absolutely. additional photos we may not have time to share. Thank you, Absolutely. Julie. Sure. And here's what Julie said. And, and it's, so it starts strangely, bleh, strangely, but this is how Julie put it. Tammy died. He says the report says that he, it's really weird. He says the report says that he called in around six in the morning. The, the, that's, she probably said the, the, I took all this from transcripts, the, the police or whoever, I don't know, because my sources are secondhand, that apparently Tammy died in her sleep at two in the morning. Chad woke up and found her on the floor. He called 911 and he was calm. This is what I'm hearing. Anybody knows Chad knows he's calm and everybody who knows Chad knows he's a visionary and he saw it coming. And that's, this is Yet December 26. So we're talking two months. Yep. After Tammy's death. Yep. And for people to understand, Julie Rowe talked to Emma that day. Julie Rowe was close to Chad before their alleged falling out just days before. She considered herself close to Chad and the family. Yep. She was in as far as information goes. She was clearly talking to people two months after her death. So I find this really interesting. 
Yes, that and being a nurse hand, that's six. exactly right. It is a sign of pulmonary edema. And it is not a common death sign at all. It's just that it has some commonalities in there's drug overdose, uh, drowning, um, and and smothering. Uh, but absolutely, it's it's not common at all. So what what made that happen to Tammy? Right. And so people question, even reading her death certificate, people have questioned, when did she die? <clears throat> I'm going to believe Julie Rowe on this. She has some inside information here. Two months after Tammy's death mm -hmm. that he called. Well, I guess we don't know when she died, but he called around six in the morning. Keep that in mind too, because Garth states on 48 hours, it was almost the night before they waited hours before calling 911 hours. I know. And, and what Garth about kind of admits account? that. Garth that admits was, that in the thing after they discover she died, they didn't call 911. They like discussed it. So um, six in the morning, even though she died the night before or during the nighttime yep. and police or whoever um, say that apparently Tammy died in her sleep at two in the morning. This would be why Garth is stating on 48 hours that he was there. There are four hours that lapse. So they put her in a different bed. They moved her body. They prayed. These aren't people that were about to call authorities, you know, about their deceased mother. And so I just, I find this report very interesting and valid. Uh, Chad woke up, found her on the floor. That's not true. We know that. And to Nurse Han's point as well, <clears throat> from what I am to understand, the, the pink foam is a, res is a response to trauma. My parents, I both passed away. Respiratory failure happens when your body is slowly dying and you're an elderly person and there's no pink foam. It's a response to trauma. It's a trauma response. So. Yeah. 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 I remember that Leanne. Yeah. That that's where we're going to touch on that interview a little bit more later. Not that part of it, but yes, he, he might've had an affair, but he's not a killer. Okay. So who attended the scene? Okay. So I'm going to dispel a big rumor here. Brenda Dye was at the scene. I, this is actually what got me started months and months ago on this uh, research. Many rumors have flown that the, the uh, uh, county coroner was not at the scene. I am 99.999% positive she was there. I have a lot of evidence to that effect. Um, Brenda Dye, the coroner. There are, different, yeah, Brenda there are different accounts of whether she actually showed up or not, but she I was there. I am almost positive she was there. We'll get into it here, but for what it's worth, that's, that's where I land. Yeah. Yeah. Sally's right. Um, okay. So in that phone call with Melanie Gibb, Chad said, my son Garth was right there with me the whole time. My kids were with at the house within 20 minutes of her passing. There were two coroners. They checked her out right there on the bed. Okay. So first of all, there aren't two coroners. <laughs> maybe what Chad is retroactively remembering is maybe there was a, uh, there are the two counties that are right there, Fremont and Madison, Madison. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There, there's probably, I guess there's a corner in Fremont County and a corner in Madison County, but Brenda Dye is the only corner that I could find that went to the scene. Um, Oh, right. He might've said somebody else was a coroner that was there. You know, the person, yeah, taking so the body. Mm -hmm. I'm so bummed that I will have to read this. So, okay, there was a 17 minute phone call that got um, provided to Fox News, and only little teeny bits of it have leaked out. Uh, Denise Rainey, God bless her soul, and I mean that with complete sincerity, published yeah. the longest portion of it. She published a minute of it. The links that I put in the slideshow aren't working, so I will pop over here and read it to you what it was. She somehow got a hold of one minute of it. Uh, I would love to hear the entire 17 minutes. What happened was um, Gilbert, Brandon Boudreaux gave Gilbert the heads up that Tammy had died. This is kind of the Rosetta Stone of the case almost. Gilbert police said, wait, what, what? Brandon said, look, Lord, they were investigating Charles's murder. Brandon said, look, 
Lori moved up to Rexburg, Idaho, and now Chad Daybell's wife is dead. You might want to look into that. So the Gilbert Police Department called Fremont County and they talked to the dispatcher who took the 911 call the, the night that Tammy died, that, that, that Chad talking to 911. They, he talked to, I get the impression that he talked to Brenda Dye. I'm pretty sure he talked to Sheriff Humphreys. Would love to hear that 17 minutes. But of the one minute that Denise had, let me see if I can find it here. While you look for that, I'll explain who Denise is to people. Uh, For those that don't know, Denise Rainey was the first YouTuber on this case. Um, I admire her. She she got a lot of the podcast episodes before they were taken down. Yes. Denise Rainey allegedly died. She was a young mother of a pulmonary embolism. Really? In her sleep. It wasn't known for a long time how she died. It was a mystery. Nobody could understand. The most recent information I have is that it was a pulmonary embolism. A little weird. A little scary. But rest in peace, Denise, and thank you for your hard work. Colette Cox is asking, Lauren, can you post these video clips on Patreon as well? She's referring to the video clips that aren't playing. Yes, I'll do that. So for those, all of this, for our Patreon supporters and those that are subscribed to Patreon, all of this will be on Patreon after. For those that, and, and we're sorry, Julie, that they're not playing. Uh, it's okay. It happens. We were in a hurry, uh, you know, scramble because you had a, a guest that couldn't couldn't come on. But I can read it. Uh, I do. Ha- I have a document uh, on my laptop that I pulled up. Um, so Ryan Pillar is who called Fremont County, and in Denise's clip, he says, "So, so Ms. Die showed Ms. Die showed. So that's why I think she was there." the the dispatcher said that she was there miss die showed up and the family said they don't want an autopsy therefore the coroner just signed off then in there and then the funeral home took miss daybell is that how this works and the dispatcher said yes that's pretty much how it works so um yeah and then they went to the funeral home and i'm not aware uh if uh brenda went to the funeral home with i don't i don't believe she did I can look into the activity and see when they, you know, when, when, when she cleared versus, well, cause I know my deputy went to the funeral home and Ryan Pillar says, mm-hmm. and she's, uh, the Fremont dispatcher says, so I'm not exactly sure, but I can look <laughs> and Pillar says, well, I know. And you said early, there's an instant report. Was there a physical report to it? I, I don't think there was a physical report because it's not letting me open it. So it was very chaotic and the dispatcher was having a hard time answering Detective Pillar's questions. But she did say that Ms. Dye showed up and the family said they don't want an autopsy. Therefore, the coroner just signed off then and there. That is the upshot of the, the clip that Denise has. Okay. Okay. It's a pretty big deal, in my opinion. It is. It is. Again, thank you, Denise. Yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. Denise uh, has some pretty cool stuff on her web, uh, her YouTube channel. She does. Okay, continuing along the same vein, 48 hours dug into this as well. The family declined an autopsy, a decision that would later cause some to question how Tammy Dable really died. And then Jonathan Vigliotti, who was being interviewed by 48 hours, said a lot of people think, oh, oh, but he's the anchor, he's like the like anchor, he's like the host. For, when I say 48 hours, I mean the voiceover. It wasn't uh, Jonathan himself, but the sort of like all-knowing voiceover. And then Jonathan is the one that's sitting across from the five Daybell children and interviewing them. Okay. A lot of people think that your father didn't want an autopsy because he murdered her and didn't want to be caught. Do you buy that? Yeah, he A was lot like, of people, right. Yeah. Well he said. Like, it's true. He, he sat across from those five Daybell kids and he asked a lot of hard questions. I know. I was proud yeah. of him. It was great. Uh, it was me great. too. They did a good job. 48 hours. Really impressive with the pretty riveting interview. And Emma said, the narrative is that he was going, no, no, no autopsy. But he was standing there in complete shock, traumatized, letting us make the decision. If he was trying to hide something, you, I wouldn't leave something like that up to my kids if I was trying to hide something. Someone had pointed out that in their state, uh, an autopsy is required for certain people under a certain age. So Joseph Scott Morgan has a podcast called Body Bags, and one of his earlier uh episodes it was from 
last year, and you have to go back and look in the older episodes, he discusses coroner states versus medical examiner states. And coroners are typically elected. They are required to have a high school education. Um, in the uh, Rebecca Barsotti case, I believe the sheriff and the coroner are the same person. Um, it's, tr it's troubling uh, the way that coroner states function. And so in coroner states, for example, in Idaho, there's a pamphlet that you can get uh, if, if your loved one dies that points out that um, the person who owns the local, it, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm, I'm embellishing a little bit here, but in effect, it says the person who loans, owns your local funeral home might also be your coroner and this could be a conflict of interest. Corner states are, are, are extremely problematic. And so uh, unfortunately, this portion of Idaho is, is um, the death investigation is who, who, uh, who declined having an autopsy. 48 hours of voiceover. The family declined an autopsy, a decision that would later cause some to question how Tammy Dale Ball had really died. Oh, did I already read this part? Oh, I already read that part. Yes, you do. Oh, go to the next slide. Sorry, my apologies. I mean to go forward. Okay. Oh, this is this is very standard Julie Holden fare when I pull the things. I love the FOIA docs. They're so <laughs> elucidating in their content. All of the FOIA docs on our Patreon account for those interested. All of them still there. Gilbert and Chandler. Yep. So this is a this is this is a bit of a this is a bit of tea, if you will. I'm not sure I have heard any other media outlet mention this because it's really actually very dull, which is why I think it's probably the truth. Um, in an affidavit buried deep, deep, deep in that blurry, blurry text in one of the FOIA documents, because the affidavits for a search warrants have a lot of boilerplate and you have a tendency to gloss over them. In an affidavit for search warrant for Maricopa County, December, 2019, Investigation into Chad Daybell revealed his wife, Tamara Daybell, died unexpectedly on 10 19, 19 in Rexburg, Idaho, but no autopsy was performed because of the cost and proximity of the location of her death and the pathologist's office. Further investigation. Oh, that's that. Sorry. I don't need to read that part. That's another thought. And on his episode about Tammy Daybell, Joseph Scott Morgan mentioned that if an autopsy had been performed, Tammy's body would have been sent to Ada County, which is Boise, Boise which is a pretty fair piece from Rexburg. Yeah, it's far from Rexburg and it looks farther. It's farther than the map shows it to be because you have to go around. There's all these mountain ranges. And so mm. even if it doesn't look as far on the map, it's a far drive because of the way you have to, go around it's not a straight you know you have to go around some mountain ranges i want to say Lori's attorney was even concerned when they were trying to figure out when to do the trial about having to drive in the winter to yeah. go to the trial i don't know larry i got i got your sweet note to banks by the way to mr mm -hmm. banks and i'll let him know um that you said hello and he misses papa too Aww. but i think that the very men excuse me, the very mundane fact that it just would have been too expensive and we'd have to send her a long way might actually be why Brenda Dye declined to send Tammy for an autopsy. It's a budget issue. That's yeah. sort of... <laughs> I, I, I try to smile. That was their issue it. with Eldon too, a budget issue. Yeah, right. Even well, those two neighbors down the street point. from each other died within, you know, weeks of each other of the same thing. Budget. That's an excellent point. How many, when I've discussed this with my husband, he's like, well, apparently I know where to move to if I want to commit a murder. I mean, if things just don't get sent to the, to the coroner or to the medical examiner because of budget reasons, at any rate... All right. I, know, I know. Not only were there investigations with the FBI and Chandler and Gilbert that you would think that they would say, hey, Tammy dies, get that autopsy. You know, you also throw in Eldon. So, <laughs> who also died of a pulmonary embolism, right? Right. Who else did they Who's need there? to die? 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then this little gem in the Gilbert FOIA releases. I established contact with the Madison County Sheriff's Office and inquired about Tammy Daybell's death. They did not have a record of Tammy and referred me to the Madison County Coroner. I contacted the Madison County Coroner, who also had no record of Tammy's death. This is such a clear comment on how confusing this case is, right? Right across county lines, totally confusing. Gilbert's trying to figure out what's going on. Like I told you, it's the Rosetta Stone of the case. They're finally starting to talk, but it took a lot of effort to figure out who's on first, if you will. Um, I reviewed the obituary that Brandon forwarded me and called the funeral home. I was referred to the Fremont County Sheriff's Office because that agency investigated Tammy's death. I called Fremont County uh, Sheriff's Office and requested their, their police report. So that's another rumor I'm going to dispel. There was a rumor that there was no police report. That's not true. There was. The, the, the dispatcher was confused when she said, I don't find any police report. There was. It has a number. There was definitely a police report. Uh, even if they, they fumbled the ball and didn't, didn't make the right decision on whether or not to call for an autopsy, they, I think by matter of fact, if someone calls 911 and you go find somebody dead in their home, there's going to be a report. Um, then spoke with coroner Brenda Dye. Coroner Dye told me that no autopsy was performed on Tammy despite her age, 49 years old, and lack of medical history. Coroner Dye asked if there was something suspicious surrounding Tammy's death. <laughs> My husband just laughed. <laughs> He's over on the couch listening to me. I mean, it's not funny, but it's laughable that the coroner asked the police in Gilbert, Arizona, who are investigating the case, well, is there something suspicious? Right. Liz is saying, if I mysteriously pass, start a GoFundMe for a full autopsy. No I second doubt. that. If, if something happens, guys, I want an autopsy. Is that on yeah. the record? Yeah. <laughs> Coroner Dye asked if there was something suspicious surrounding Tammy's death. I told her I was unsure. Unsolicited, Coroner Dye shared that... She spoke with neighbors of the Daybell family. The neighbors referred to the Daybell family as extremely religious. And there were recent reports of people meeting to plan for a doomsday event. So she knew about that. Let that sink in. That's an important, that's an important part of the FOIA docs. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Just, Yeah. When called, that's her first thought. Oh, well, you know, they're extremely religious and people have been telling me there's a doomsday thing going on and people are meeting over there. Why are you asking somebody in Arizona whether there's something suspicious? Oh my God. Okay. I got to move on. Okay. Now here's where a little bit of kind of, there was definitely a backwards pedaling da -da 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 going on with Fremont County. Um, Cause it was not, it was not good. What was being said about what happened regarding their response to Tammy Daybell's death. Uh, more light shed on autopsies surrounding the Daybells. Um, Sheriff Humphreys, there's a couple of, there's at least two different interviews uh, you can find on YouTube with Sheriff Humphreys doing um, damage control, effectively. Um, so he said, I know that, I know I know that was a recording that came out of our office. You have to understand that was a dispatcher who was very new and didn't have the complete information. She did not have all the facts. That's what Sheriff Humphrey said. According to Humphreys, one of his officers first responded to a call about Tammy's death on October 19th. The officer went to the Dayville home in Salem, examined the body, then called the Fremont County coroner, Brenda Dye. Die soon arrived at the home as well. I'm trying to slow down. Sorry. It was Die's decision not to order an autopsy. I repeat, it was Die's decision not to order an autopsy. And I believe that. And I believe 100% that it was due to cost. That's my right. opinion. I also think Alex Cox died of natural causes. So take my opinion for what it's worth. Um, Humphrey said an autopsy decision would not have been left up to the family. He said, there wasn't any information or any indication that anything was out of line. Except that Brenda Dye knew there were doomsday people talking about end of the world stuff. But anyway, I digress. Dye then wrote a death certificate, the details of which have not been released. 
but we have that death, death certificate at the end of this uh, slideshow. Di was elected to her position of coroner in November 2018. She has a high school education and works as an advanced EMT at Fremont County EMS. Had Di ordered an autopsy, that autopsy would have been conducted by a trained ME rather than Di. Correct. In Ada County. That part's correct. <laughs> I agree with you, Liz. I would hire Carrie Livingston as my... Me too. Right. If I go, if I'm mysteriously killed, can um, Carrie Livingston and Liz Johnson and Julie Holden and Clint Cox all make sure to cover my, uh, my death? There you go. Yep. Is that on record too? <laughs> okay. We're still on October 19th, the day that Dammy died, the cause of death. Right. We've talked about um, what it was like when they first found her. We've talked about who attended the scene. Now we're going to talk about what various people think the cause of death was contemporaneous to October 19th. Chad said in his call that Melanie Gibb recorded, my own children were there. They testified. You, you all discussed this. You and John discussed this in one of your podcast episodes. Yes, we Chad do. Chad loves to use the word testified. He when, loves it. It's yes, so prophetic. He, yeah. yeah. When he's saying testified here, he's not talking about testified in court or testified to a grand jury or testified anywhere at all. This is a Chad Daybell word. It just means it's a it's it's rage and rage inducing it is rage me. inducing it's it's chad it has a pseudo religious way of using testified as in they sp spoke the truth it's so manipulative too it's you know this whole idea that oh he, you know this he's not an angry narcissist he's more of a covert narcissist you know everyone thought he was humble and calm and then when you notice these little manipulative things he does it's so much worse i'd rather just see Absolutely. someone be bombastic it's like that passive aggressive Oh, but hello, sweet Melanie. I testify. I testify. Sorry. Yeah, no, drives it's me crazy. It's, it's, and, and it's important in this particular context. My own children were there. They testified that Tammy had been getting weaker and sick, and I begged her to go to the doctor because she just, her heart was failing her. She was physically failing, falling apart, and she hates doctors, and she just passed away. Um, that's how it happened. So right. He's been laughed again. He doesn't know this case very well. So when I say these things that are completely <laughs> beyond. Do you ever try to talk to him about it? Do you ever try to talk to about this case with engineer John? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, 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 he believes everything I tell him. So <laughs> no, actually I will. He just laughed. I will tell you, he agrees with me about Alex being natural. The death okay. being natural. Okay, Engineer John, I'll take that. I I'm listening. Take it under advice. Right, and Carrie Livingston says, as if testifying makes it truth. Exactly, right. exactly. And because we do have listeners who are new to the case, I just, it's also another way in which it's very sneaky. They testified that Tammy had been getting weaker. It's like he's putting, so col cults will re-identify words. It's one of the very sneaky things that cults do. They'll re-identify them just ever so slightly differently from how you're used to using the word. And ta Chad kind of, you know, comes up with a new meaning for testified, meaning I'm speaking the truth per Chad Daybell's way of looking at the world. It has nothing to do with any kind of official testimony. <laughs> By the way, Revenge AU, she said, am I allowed to say as a new sub just once that I want to punch Chad in the face? The frog looking bloke. Revenge yep. you, you are in the right. You have found your friends. Yep. <laughs> Other people call him a thumb for what it's worth. You He's are with your bloke. people. We're glad you found us. Yep. Welcome. Yeah. Very punchable <laughs> face on that guy. You're allowed to say it more than once. Um, okay. Um 48 hours reported. When the coroner arrived, the family says she told them it looked like Tammy had died of natural causes. The children, who say that their mother was in failing health, did not question it. This is another reason why I'm pretty sure she was there. Uh, this is still completely not okay for an advanced EMT, high school educated coroner to show up at the scene of a death and say, Meh, it looks natural. And that's it. We're done. Yeah. She goes to the funeral home. There's no autopsy. That's <laughs> all good. I got to go back to bed. 
I mean, I don't know what. Okay. I know like, if my mother died, uh, you know, I mean, I don't even like to talk about it. That hurts my heart to even say that. And, and yeah. we all know that one day she will, you know, we yeah. all die, but, um, yeah, I would absolutely want an autopsy. Absolutely. I wanted an autopsy on my grandmother because she died unexpectedly and she was in her eighties, but it was really upsetting. She was fine one day. And then one day she was dead and it was horrible. She, she had a heart attack. I'm pretty sure, she, you know, it's okay. A person in their eighties, but still. I, April I, I, is saying, April is saying she doesn't want an autopsy respect for that. I'll say this. My grandfather, my mom's father died at 65. Oh. His widow, my grandmother found him. No autopsy. They lived do, 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 in East Idaho. Oh, well. And she regrets it. She, it. It was just, she was in shock. And she assumed it was perhaps a heart attack. But he was a very yeah. healthy man and a chiropractor who took his vitamins and ate well. And um, when she saw the cost, I think that she could have really used a victim's advocate type person to say, you know, you might want this later because she was in shock. It was unexpected. Yeah. Yeah. And they just sort of said, you know, it's going to be this. Maybe don't worry about it because he would have had to go to Boise. And yeah. that was her choice. And I lived with her later. I started my reporting career in East Idaho. So I lived with my grandma. She was my roommate when I started my reporting career. Um, my grandfather's Sweet. widow. Yeah, it was a wonderful time. And uh, she told me she regretted that, that she wished she had gotten an autopsy. I think this is a moment and a time of shock where people need to encourage it. And there needs to be more responsibility for really helping people understand what their choices are. But for April, we'll know that April P does not want an autopsy for Got everyone it. else. Everyone else gets two. If I was Oprah, everyone gets an autopsy. <laughs> you, you get an autopsy. autopsy. You, you get, get an autopsy. autopsy yeah. And you get an autopsy. We all get autopsies except April. Sorry. Go ahead. So this next quote is from, I don't, I didn't put the screenshot on the slide show because it's a very long, skinny screenshot. So on Reddit, on December 16th, 2019, a user with the username E. Daybell posted in the Reddit user group Grief Support a long description of, and this is another good thing that you might want to put on Patreon, actually, because it's, uh, unfortunately, the, um, the post is no longer there. It's just there's legacy screenshots of it. I 100% legit believe that this is what was posted. I just, Reddit users are very nerdy and um, factual and somebody thought to grab a screenshot of it. What she said was, she so Emma took to um, Reddit grief support to talk about how uh, upsetting it was the whole process her family was going through, her mother dying and then, um, uh, Eventually, her mother being exhumed. It's also in, in this message. Uh, the coroner told us it was natural causes. It looked like the textbook definition of heart failure. The death was unexpected, and the family has taken it hard. I think this is probably the closest to the real, like, dis distilled truth that we'll get as far as what Emma, I think she's being very true here and reporting very yes. true. So this is a Reddit grief support subreddit. That's yes. interesting. Right. Yes. The Where coroner told us natural causes. I'm yep. just reading it again. I know you read it, but no, it fine. looked like textbook definition of heart failure. It was unexpected. My family has taken it hard. That would be similar to my grandpa. This you is know? a very, very, very packed sentence though. It was unexpected. Yeah. It was unexpected. The family and she was 49. It. She wasn't 65. She wasn't 80, but she wasn't even 60. She wasn't 50. She was 49. None of this BS that Chad is trying to blow up people's skirts about how she had just been getting really sick and she wouldn't go to the doctor and all my kids knew it and she was just really not doing well. It was unexpected. Also, the coroner said it was natural causes. Not okay. Not okay for a coroner to go to a 49-year-old woman's death and say, eh, looks like natural causes. No. Heart failure. Love the untrained part-time elected coroner. <laughs> but it was unexpected is a big deal to me. It is a big okay. deal. <clears throat> um, oh, this is where I had to try to squeeze a bunch of stuff onto one screen. This is from that 48 hours interview. This is a lot of people were talking about this earlier in chat. This, this shocked everybody. Emma says, so 
I'm just going to back up. Emma wrote on Reddit in December 16th, 2019, two months after her mother died, that it was unexpected. Now here's what Emma's saying. She would get out of breath very quickly and would get very tired. And she would, started going to bed very early at night. Oh. This is where she's getting confirmation bias. She's just trying so hard. I, I see. That's what I see, at least. She's trying What's so hard to be okay with this idea. Yes, and she wants to she wants to be I get it. I get it. Families are little cults. She wants to be she wants to toe the family line, but I'm just saying that in December, 2 months after mother dies, this is what she said. It was unexpected and the family's been taking it hard. When she goes on 48 hours like a couple of years later, she would get out of breath very quickly and would get very tired blah blah blah. Well, I don't even know if she's towing the family line right there either. I think she's trying so hard yeah, to convince no. herself her dad isn't lying to them, you know, confirmation bias is true too. You're, you're her denial and her defense mechanism is her defense mechanism is denial and confirmation bias. Yes. Yep. Yep. She was just totally, she was at Zumba and my, my Zumba moves were better than hers. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. And, and, and her siblings were telling her this as well. I'm sure. Um, 48 hours says, uh, though the results of Tammy's autopsy performed after she was exhumed have not been publicly released. Garth Daybell says authorities told him how they believe his mother was killed. Garth, they told me that she'd been asphyxiated, but we never saw an autopsy. And then Mark says, asphyxiation doesn't necessarily mean smothered. According to my understanding, it just means the breath was interrupted. And in the end, she wasn't able to breathe. And according to that, there's more facts we need. We don't just say, oh, well, bye, Chad. No, there's still love and there's still connection. I mean, and that just makes, that actually makes me sad, right? As, as Leah Clayton says, I feel sorry for the children. That's not just denial or confirmation bias. That's straight up mental gymnastics. Okay. Asphyxiation, but that just means her breathing was interrupted by some random what? By what? what? It's sad. It's a, it's, it's, it's a yeah. classic use of passive voice. Her breathing was interrupted. The door was closed. I used to teach English. People don't understand. I'm sorry. I'm trying to deal with my dog here. Can you? You're a multitasker. <laughs> so is my dog. Um, right, Liz. Right. Her breathing was interrupted by Chad's hands or Alex. Right. I had, the, I had the suspicion it was Alex and only because Chad's a freaking coward. No, and I do he, too. I, and he thinks, yeah, that's just, so there's my thought is, and Chad really did have this belief that if, if Alex did that, then, you know, he's free. He's a free man. Like it, it actually couldn't affect him anyway. And then Jonathan Vigliotti comes in with the, with a good question. Uh, not, not being, being a good, you know, journalist, not being willing to take this passive voice uh, statement on its face. What went on in your mind when you have police telling you your mother was asphyxiated, your mother was asphyxiated. He's putting it more active. Gar says it's huh, it's hard to process, but I still can't believe that he would do such a thing. And Leah says, my dad loved my mom very much and she loved him. He could never do that. I do feel terrible for these children. I cannot even imagine what they're going through. But in this examination of what happened to Tammy Daybell, well, it's just very interesting the way things constantly conflict, the way the different things people said. I also find, I want to go back, that Garth quote is really telling to me. I want to repeat that. It's hard to process, mm -hmm. but I just can't believe that he would do such a thing. That feels like yeah. a really honest moment there. Yes. He's pretty much saying, like, I get that this, whether it's hard to process that our dad did it or whether it's hard for you to process that my dad is innocent. The reason is I, you, I just can't believe that yeah. he would do such a thing that I think that shows that what this is, is no matter how much evidence he is going to deny this because he just cannot believe that his dad would do such a thing. And I will, I will say that I couldn't fit it on the slide, so I didn't put it on here. But one of the things that Garth goes on to mention is that in the past, he feels that the police have not been honest with him. So there is an element I gather with the Daybell children of um, feeling distrustful of police. Of police. I mean, think about it again. They waited four hours after Tammy died to even call police. I know, at least four. I hours. would have been so distraught. The very first thing I would do if I found a deceased 
parent, even if I knew they were dead, is call 911. I'd be so yeah, me too. traumatized. I would just be the like, somebody help me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> other reports, uh, secondhand or otherwise, of what happened to Tammy. Uh, this is in a report written by uh, Nathan Duncan from Chandler PD. Um, deleted message to Lori from an unknown person at nine o'clock in the morning. That's pretty much ground zero. I'm not sure if you heard, but Chad's wife died last night. Lori responded, uh, what, 1828 to 15 minutes later. Oh my gosh, I did not hear that. I'm in Hawaii and it's 6 a.m. Lori continued uh, a minute later, do you know what happened? The unknown person answered a couple of three minutes later, yes, she awoke in the night coughing, threw up, collapsed, and passed away. Peaceful. That's really peaceful, by the way. Sorry. No, it's just bizarre how many different stories there are of how this woman died. Right. Serene and with a smile on her face, barfing. You know, sorry. Well, sorry. No, it's true. She woke up coughing, threw up, and uh, oh my God. Okay, this is why I made this slideshow. This is why I put this all in one place because it is mind blowing. All right. And then Utah Medical Examiner, and I think people will find this very interesting as well. I can't, uh, well, let's see who wrote this. Pillar, Gilbert, Gilbert, Arizona. God, I love the Gilbert FOIA docs. They are full of information. Gilbert. Bingo, Larry Woodcock, too. What about that half marathon she was training to run or the Zumba, the Zumba classes? Zumba classes. She took all, Absolutely. That she never missed. Yeah. Not to mention, I'm sorry, but driving however many hours down to see her family and however many hours back is also takes a bit of effort anyway. Um, okay. Gilbert says I was contacted by the Maricopa County office of the medical examiner and notified that Alex's autopsy report would be released. I spoke with the office of the medical examiner. That's what OME means. Dr. Wallace. Again, this is, well, let me just read it through OME, Dr. Wallace about the possibility for additional toxicology tests. Dr. Wallace said she communicated with the ME in Salt Lake City, Utah, the doctor who performed the autopsy of Tammy Daybell. At the time of my conversation with Dr. Wallace, no additional tests were viable without a known poison or substance that could have contributed to Alex or Tammy's death. I know a lot of people think that the, the both of them have been poisoned. That is not my opinion, but I am just letting you know that this is the, and these are medical examiners. These are really strong uh, people in their field, really well-qualified, super smart people who know what they're doing. You cannot know what killed somebody if it's a poison, unless you can test for that poison. Go figure. Right, right. Wow. That's how things stand. That was April of 2021. Yeah. A lot of people are asking about Lori being in Hawaii. Yes. Lori was not she in was. town. Nope. She was not in not town in when town. Tammy died. She was in Hawaii. Plan probably, but that's where she was. I'm sure she knew. I have a feeling, but you know, that's me. Just spec Fridays are for speculation. Oh but my yes, gosh. She was not in town. I did not hear that. What happened? <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> Right, right. And that's a great moment on the Sherry Doddle interview, too, when they discussed that. Melanie t Melanie Gibb shares that she told Lori, too. But clearly oh, that was yeah. another person texting, also sharing with Lori. So Lori was playing dumb a couple of times then, right? Was yeah, that I ran Nicole? out of time. I wasn't able to pull that one up. I would love was to that, Yeah, that. that's fine. But that was with Nicole, we think, right? And Nicole, those texts you just shared? Oh, yeah. And Lori's like, cool. oh, my goodness, what happened? Because... Because Melanie Gibb shares with Sherry Doddle on the interview I have with Sherry Doddle that Melanie Gibb is also telling Lori that Tammy died. And Lori's like, oh, I had no idea. So so here she is playing dumb twice. Well, and is, isn't it interesting that Nicole and, and probably Chandler PD, 918 hours. It's, it's an interesting question. If that 9, 9, 9 a.m. is Arizona time. What time was it in Rexburg? I don't know. The point is, it was the morning. 
Chad called 911 and within a couple of hours, Nicole is hot to trot on the phone, letting Lori know that Tammy's dead. That's yeah. weird to me. I find that weird. Yeah. Oh, and I'm sorry. I'm covering a lot of that with all these great no, it's comments. Okay. We're getting we're, so we're, many great comments. No, it's so okay. Put, put Nicole them up. says it's that. It doesn't buffer at the bottom. You can stick them on the screen. It's good. Yeah. Nicole says this, and I agree. I've seen most of this before, she says, but it seems more shocking when you see it all in one place. Mm, I agree with that, right? When you put this together, it just is sort of mind blowing. So thank you for doing it. Blew it blew my mind as I was going through it. I just, ugh. anyway, okay. We're nearing the end of our saga. But this is actually kind of in some ways also where my research started. This really, really, really fast timeline after this poor woman was murdered, how quickly they embalm her and stick her in the ground. Two days after Tammy died, her obituary was published in the Rexburg Standard Journal. I already discussed this. I think that's a very, very fast turnaround time for a obituary. It was a long obituary. It's a beautiful obituary. I don't think Chad wrote it on his own. I'm just going to put that out there. He probably got some help. Um, it's it's a it's a it's a good obituary. It honors Tammy very well, and I think that that's one of the only positive things I can say about this is that at least they wrote a very lovely obituary for this woman. On that same day, there was a viewing. Two days later, again, that's very fast. A viewing from six to seven thirty p.m at the Spring Creek Sixth Ward Chapel in Utah. Two days, two days later, she was in, in a different state, in a different yes. state. Yes. By this time, it's likely that Tammy's body would have been embalmed. I did a bunch of research on this. I dug very deep into Utah and Idaho code and law. Of course you did. The <laughs> The body had been held more than 24 hours prior to burial, which is pretty common, actually. But once the body is held more than 24 hours prior to burial, it needs to be embalmed. Plus, it had been transported to Utah. Bodies begin to decompose very quickly. Funeral homes embalm bodies pretty much right away because they're, that's, that, that's what they do. That's their job. That's their business. The funeral home that received Tammy's body is licensed by the state and has been since 1970, the state of Idaho. These guys have been in the funeral home business since 1970. Licensees are regulated by Idaho code, which states that if a body has to be held longer than 24 hours prior to burial or cremation or other disposition, the body must be either embalmed or refrigerated at 36 degrees Fahrenheit or less until buried, cremated, or otherwise disposed of. So unless they kept her really cold and put her in a refrigerated truck on her way to Utah, they embalmed her. They embalmed her. And Chad, gosh darn, probably knew this because he worked in the funeral and in the um, cemetery business. He received wow. bodies. I mean, he was only the groundskeeper pretty much, but he knew this. I guarantee you he knew this. He probably took a continuing education courses. Hmm. Uh, a couple a couple of things I want to clear up. People are discussing some time differences in Arizona and Idaho, and it is confusing. So it is confusing. Arizona, I'll I'll explain it. I'm a, Please uh, do. One of them doesn't go on. Oh this God. is the ish. This is the situation. Arizona is smart. That's what Arizona is. It is. If they don't do the the, the daylight they savings don't. time, then they are smart because daylight they savings are. time sucks. Arizona is Pacific time, but. They do not celebrate daylight celebrate. savings. Celebrate, yeah, it's a holiday, right? I don't celebrate it either. Well, it, it's a holiday when it's it's uh, you get an extra hour of sleep. Um, yes, yeah, never a holiday when that. you have a child. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> one of those two is great, and one of them sucks. They do not recognize daylight savings time. So uh, imagine John and I living at the corner of Nevada, Arizona, and Utah. We really had to get this right because Nevada is Pacific time. Utah is mountain time and Arizona switches half the year. So we had to like keep all, we were right in the corner there. It was very difficult. So <laughs> I have experience with that. That's the difference. And then people are also talking about the injection with air. I had the same question. And I don't know if you guys remember, but when Joseph Scott Morgan was yes. on discussing Tammy's death, I, I did ask him that. And he pretty much was like, yeah, get that idea out of your head. But I want you guys to know that he does talk about that. I asked him that it was a question to me. And he wouldn't even go to Malachite. So I don't know why we can ask him again, but 
He wouldn't even go there. I okay. will say this because it drives me nuts. Malachite green is not malachite. Oh my God, I could do a whole nother... It's, it's getting late and, and, and we've been on too long and I won't go on my soapbox. Malachite green is a malachite colored... It's, it's a dye stuff. It's, it's, it's basically a dye, but it's also used in aquariums. It's the crystalline stuff that you put in aquariums and you also use to dye things green. It okay. is not malachite. It's a completely different chemical component. Really? It's malachite? Yes. I'm it's listening. Cool. You have it's my cool. full attention. Don't, really don't skip over this. This is important. Keep going. Well, but it's another topic and I want to finish the slideshow, which is almost done. But malachite green or malachite green, um, I think peroxide or hydrochloride, it's got a, a little um, chemical name on the end of it, is a chemical component food a food and dye, dye thing. It's not for food, but it's a dye stuff thing that is very poisonous. And there are cases of children eating the green rocks out of aquariums and dying. Did, did these, these bozos you know, um, Lori and Chad think that malachite green was malachite and poison people with it. Maybe, but I just want people to know that it's not malachite. You can just look it up on Wikipedia, look up malachite green on Wikipedia. It says in the very first paragraph that it's not malachite. Nobody's <laughs> grinding up malachite and poisoning people with it. It's a whole nother topic of conversation. Interesting. But. Okay. We'll have you back on for that. And I want to acknowledge because this is important. When I said the the times about Arizona, Lee B is explaining to me that actually a part of um, Arizona is on mountain time because Navajo runs on mountain time and that That's Navajo does observe daylight savings time. So thank huh. you. Thank you, yeah. Lee B. That's very, very thank interesting. You. I I, yeah. I have a whole nother thing I could go on about daylight savings time where I look at the map and what the light does on the planet. I live in Texas and oh my God. All right, I'm going to go on to the next slide. <laughs> Okay, yes. <laughs> Full of information for us. Okay. Trim with your suits would be fun to play with you. Yeah. We're getting near the end. Um, on Monday, um, oh, wait, I'm going to back up and get my bearings. We're still on Monday, the 21st, right? Two days after Tammy died. Oh, that's right. I'm still talking about <laughs> embalming. I went, I really went down a rabbit hole on this. Additionally, Idaho statute states this is Idaho. It shall be unlawful for any public transportation agent of any public transportation facility to receive a dead body for shipment or transportation by any means of transportation or conveyance to or from any point in this state or to a point outside of this state unless said embalmed, embalmed human body is accompanied by a permit for final disposition signed by the individual authorized by law to certify the cause of death. And then last but not least in the Utah code where the body would have been received, lastly, per Utah administrative code, any body shipped by common carrier must be embalmed by a licensed embalmer in a manner approved by the state board of embalming. My point is she was embalmed. Two days after she died, she was embalmed. Embalming wiped away any possible cause of Poisoning, for example, it takes all of the blood out of the body, other than possibly the vitreous fluid. It's a great way to cover up a poisoning. I still think she was choked to death. But, and I don't usually admit this kind of thing, I, I could be wrong. <laughs> and I also am wondering if he was uh, giving her sedatives or something else to make her more placid. That's kind of where I think that's why they. Interesting. Interesting. That's my theory. Somebody brought up something interesting and I want to ask you if you know anything about it. Cause it's, she makes a good point. We do know that when Tammy died, Lori was in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. We also know from the Melanie Gibb interview with Nate Eaton that after the funeral, the children stopped by Lori's house for cookies. Did oh, she come I right away? I don't know about that. I, I've heard that that's, that's been dispelled. I've heard, but I've, I haven't had any proof that it wasn't. And I've listened, someone was saying that on the group. So I went back and listened to Melanie Gibbs interview and she's very, very confident. She says, she says it to prove to the children. She knows what's going on. Nadine pretty much says, well, you know, how do we know to trust you? And she's pretty much 
you know, how do, how do the children, she says, I feel sorry for the Dayball children, but I know that they went to Lori's after the funeral and had cookies. Yeah, but Melanie Gibb also says that Lori wasn't a good cooker. I've heard she makes good cookies and we know, she, you know, I've heard her make a few things. I, I don't believe Melanie Gibb. I mean, also like, you know, let me just throw this out. I make cookies that consists of taking the dough out of the bag <laughs> and putting it in the toaster oven. And that is me making cookies. So that's so, a good point. Yeah. <laughs> um, You're talking to a Pillsbury Bake Off winner. So yeah, <laughs> but it's interesting. It's interesting. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Lori came back right away either too, though, you know, because she would oh. want to be with her man. No, 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 no. She definitely came back right away. And and I, I can put that together for you some other time if you'd like. No, I think she was boots on the ground really quickly. I, there's no no holding her back now, right? She's right. Doing what she wants. Right. Which is yeah. so horrifying. So they, I mean, oh, they think she made poison cookies for a lot of people. Yeah, right. I believe it. I right, believe right. It. I think she knew how to cook just enough to be able to put poison in things. Good point. So, But I, I want to return to that idea that that just for a moment that Chad was putting it out there for years, probably to women he was having an affairs with. Gee, don't worry. My wife will be dead soon. You know, and, and, and Lori was just in Hawaii waiting for Tammy to die. She'd been waiting for Tammy, for Tammy to die for months. It, I'm sorry. It just, I can't wait for this thing to go to trial. I, I just, sorry, let's get back to the, topic at hand but it just it just it's i i feel very sad for tammy's family okay to say the least um okay um so then the 22nd was when they had funeral services in utah and the 23rd is when they had a um memorial service in uh idaho and that's when chad probably thought he was done and dusted with his wife Tammy but guess what Chad they exhumed her dun, dun, dun. Dun, December dun, 12th dun. right December 12th oh December 11th December 11th December 12th is when 11. Alex died and I read something today that said that they actually don't think that Alex knew that Tammy was being exhumed that's a whole another slideshow we could do whether or not he knew it or not, who knows? But they definitely exhumed Tammy's body on December 11th. They pulled her up, did their work, put her back down really quickly. Um, I suspect they were probably looking for one or two things and probably found them. That is my guess. So when she wrote her um, comment on the, the, the grief support Reddit, Emma also said, a few neighbors, uh, I'm going to just... She said let by my aunt, but she probably meant led by my aunt. A few neighbors led by my aunt in our small town have decided that since my dad remarried so quickly, he murdered my mother. This started out as a benign, though hurtful, rumor. It has escalated to the point, however, that they exhumed my mom's body for an autopsy. We went to visit her grave and her body had been dug up. Now, I think Emma might be embellishing a bit here. Because yeah. a Dateline producer wrote on Twitter, when I first visited Springville in January 2020, I assumed Tammy's body was gone for testing, but the body had been exhumed, tests done, and the body reburied within 14 hours. That is remarkable. Not to blug Joseph Scott Morgan too much, but his recent, very most recent, it's actually the most recent episode on exhumations on body bags, he talks a lot about how when they pull that body up out of the ground, they have got to work fast. Everybody's looking for something. I'm floored they had it back in the ground in 14 hours. My suspicion is that they were looking for any sort of breakages in the throat. Either the, the um, there's the famous hyoid bone, which is way, 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 way up in your throat. And then there's also a, a um, kind of a cartilaginous um, body that's related to your, your thyroid that can okay. be broken. There's, there's another one over, I think it's on the left side of your body, it might be right side. Oh no, it's over here, it's right here. 
I think it's right here. I don't know. Listen to the Joseph Scott Morgan thing. He'll talk about it. I think it's over here. Anyway, there's a couple of things in your, your neck and throat that can be broken if you are choked. Um, he mentioned when you interviewed him that there could still possibly be petechia in the, in the eyes. Hard to say. But I think they were looking for very specific things. They could not have done a tox screen. They might have been able to pull vitreous fluid. Maybe, maybe not. I think that's iffy. But for sure, they were looking for physical damage to her body, in my opinion. That's why they could get her up and get her down really quickly. For what it's worth. And, and I'm talking way too fast. I'm sorry. That is interesting. And Freya Dragon, the random fact you just shared is also interesting. Thank you. What was that? Um, oh, and Larry Woodcock is filling us in. The only thing Lori cooked was cookies. Oh, that's fascinating. Okay. Thank you, Larry, for sharing that. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And um, I believe she did a fruit salad. I've heard of a fruit salad and we know that she raved about Kay's potato salad. I don't know if she made that or um, what, but thank you, Larry. Yes. Uh, she cooked cookies. No, I think Kay's potato, bleh, Kay's potato, oh my God. Kay's potato salad is all Kay and I still want the recipe. Yeah. I think it's about potato salad. That's another and, uh, <laughs> for people, people are asking something. Here's another little bit of tea. I've already had my time to think about it. So I've processed how I'm going to say this without giving certain things away. Uh, some people said, I can't imagine that Lori would have wanted to date Chad. I think that's been, a, that's been a very big question in this case. What did Lori see in Chad? Well, she saw someone prophetic and, and John and I talk a lot about this on our podcast. Well, da, 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 here's the tea I'm going to drop. I'm going to be careful with my words. Somebody told me that somebody suspected Lori might be having an affair with Chad Daybell. Mm -hmm. This person who heard this rumor went to Lori and asked about it. Are you having an affair with Chad Daybell? And Lori's response was pulling up a picture of Chad Daybell on her phone and saying, really, you really think that I would be dating Chad Daybell? Oh Look at Chad Daybell. Do you honestly think oh I would be having an affair with Chad Daybell? And they both laughed about it. And that was the end of the conversation. Wow. I've been dying to share that story for a very long time. So I'm glad I could figure out how to share that. Dr. John loves that story. So it's the very definition of protest too much or not <laughs> enough. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. She seemed to understand. Yeah. When we talk about her being incompetent, she was at least competent enough to understand how she can manipulate people into thinking she wasn't dating Chad Daybell. So it's pretty good. Yep. I agree. Sorry, still dealing with my crazy dog over here. <laughs> okay. She never sleeps until I sleep and then she sleeps. Okay, so um, about the exhumation as well. Ryan Pillar in um, Gilbert wrote, I called Lieutenant Powell and learned Lori and Chad flew to Hawaii together. I also learned Melanie and Alex had been seen at the aforementioned apartment complex. No children were observed. Lieutenant Powell told me that his agency intended to exhume Tammy Dable's body as a result of the investigation discoveries. I don't know who Lieutenant Powell is, but it's just something for you to put a pin in. The reason why I thought it was interesting is because uh, November 6th to 8th, 2019 is when they started talking about exhuming Tammy. I think people think that like they talked about exhuming B Tammy on like December 10th and they exhumed her on the 11th. No, no, no. It takes a while. Again, that's another thing that Joseph Scott Morgan discusses. You, you, you don't just sort of like want to exhume somebody and then you exhume them. There's all kinds of judiciary stuff that has to happen. There's there's uh, judges that got to sign off on it and everything. It's not a, it's not an easy process. It's a complicated process. So November 6th, and 6th to 8th is when they started discussing exhuming her body. Which also, if you think about it, is not all that long after she died. They, they were on the case. I've said this before. I'll say it again. Once that Rosetta Stone moment happened and, uh, you know, Idaho and Arizona started talking to each other, things started moving pretty freaking quickly. And in fact, um, 
November 6th to 8th is, is earlier than that December 5th to 6th time frame when Arizona just lit up like a fire, like a, like a, uh, like a Christmas tree. Things started moving really quickly with them in early December. Okay, then December 11th, the Fremont County Sheriff's Office exhumed Tammy Dable's body from her grave in Salt Lake City. The preliminary results from her autopsy appeared her death was. We've discussed this at length. That's a whole other video people can talk about. All right. Last but not least, February 2021. So let's just back up for a second. She was exhumed in December of 2019. Over a year, well over a year later. The Fremont County Sheriff's Office received an autopsy report on Tammy Dable's body from the Utah Medical Examiner. Well over, over a year later. That's always interesting me. Well year. over a year later. Woo! Yeah. I have no idea. I do not understand why that took so long. I really, I don't know if no. someone's telling the truth. What? I have wondered if it had to do with COVID. I mean, um, I think she died right. before COVID, right? So you would think that that wouldn't if there was like a line, you know, a waiting game with a number, she would be first in line. You know, she died in 2019, but that's one thing I've thought, but yeah, I don't know why it took so long either. Who knows? A long time. And then, oh, it, it, darn it. It didn't show up. Well, you'll have to just put it on your Patreon or something. We did. Uh, it's, it's, it's out there. You can find it her, or if you can pull it up, Lauren, her, um, her death certificate, the original one, not the one after she was exhumed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You emailed it to me. Let me yeah, get it. I don't have it. This is the thank you screen because I get my slideshow um, templates from a place called um, Slides Go. So they require you to put this up here. And so thank you, Slides Go. I like your templates. They're very good. I'm not very good at making slideshows. I think you might have sent it to Hidden True Crime info at gmail.com can you yeah. send it to the other one if you know what yeah, i mean sure. absolutely i typically like it to be hidden true crime info now we have a new email address but Ooh. let's see what i can do yeah, this was an interesting thing that came up her death certificate and it came up because uh emma daybell was in court about uh tammy's estate that's right that's how it came up that's how it That's came, exactly up. How it came up. So it's not that they would have released this for anything. Um, it's I don't even know if it's evidence, but it, it, it was interesting. It was in the probate. Yeah. Right. Right. So I will pull this up and do a screen share with it. It should. I'm, I'm sorry that I had you send it to the wrong. That's all right. Let's see if you get it in that way. And it's a little blurry. The, the copy I'm sending you is the clearest copy that I think we have. Um, the field that I'm going to argue with people about forever is the hours since deceased field, I think is the one that I don't agree with people on, but. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of other beautiful things here about Tammy. Um, Oh, I don't have, I'm, I'm not on the right computer, but I will tell you this. Oh, here it is. Got it. Yeah, you tell them I'll pull it up. Yeah, let me tell you about this because I, I, if you go, you can still see this on Tammy's um, Facebook page. She posted a cartoon drawing of a little baby duckling looking very sleepy and kind of dragging his blankie behind him. And the text says, when I grow up, I'm going to be the kind of person who lets their kids go to bed whenever they want. And Tammy said something like, oh my gosh, if there's ever anything that I ever identified with. I'm not explaining it that well, but what I took it to mean was, I, th I think maybe Tammy was the kind of person who just went to bed when she went to bed. The kids are up. I don't care. I'm sleepy. I'm going to bed. Dude, she worked full time, ran a publishing company. You know what I mean? Yes. Like. She trained for marathon. She did Zumba. She was go, go, go. She probably got up very early right. in the morning to take care of her children. Let the woman tired sleep. Tired at the end of the day. And so. Let the woman sleep and play Frontierville. Damn it. Right. 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 Yeah. And when her. Oh, gosh. When, when reports are being given, there's a nice use of passive voice by people that are close to her that she was going to bed earlier and earlier. I. 
it, 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 it rankles me because if the woman was going to bed earlier, it's because she was freaking tired. I do also think that Chad was drugging her. But I also oh. think that she was just the kind of person who needed her sleep. Well, As there's a, some Friday speculation. Uh, Chad was drugging her. So I can I, I can was, do I this in more. Her to make her more, more compliant and easy to, to, to smother. Okay, so here's the, here's, this is the death certificate. The first one, the one created by Brenda Dye, the one that says that she died of natural causes. Do you want me to make it even bigger? And where do you want me to go? Sure, I can go for it. it. Okay. Wait, nope, that's it. <laughs> I think that's, that's all we got. Get. It's really, it's if people have to kind of, this is as big as if I had been able to put it on my screen as well as we can get. Unfortunately, it's hard to read here, but. Um, Immediate cause of death, cardiac arrest. Yes. And due to pulmonary edema. Yes. Huh. That's the second one. Right. October 19th, 2019. Hmm. Uh, what else? Uh, Brenda die signs off on it. I think uh, it says that she died between quite a few hours. So if we're going to take what children said, she dies at two, they call it six. Um, that's, that's the field that I don't agree with everybody on. Let me see if I can pull it up on my machine. Anyway. Okay, the estimated, that's the field I don't agree with people on, is the estimated time of death, it's right next to October 19th, 2019, is between midnight and, I, 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 I don't know if that field says one, it's just so blurry, but she died between midnight and some unknown time. She died after right. midnight. They decided she died after midnight, which is, I, I don't actually believe it. I don't believe that. That's a big thing for me. I Huh. I think I think that the unverified reports that that um Garth was called from the um haunted mill are true. I believe those. Now, I know haunted houses go very very late, but he was said to have left early that night to go home because his mother was ill. I personally think she may have died on the 18th. Was murdered on the 18th. That's just my opinion. It's, it's unfounded in anything other than the, the, the rumor about Garth and so on and so forth. If they had had a medical examiner, they would have taken a, a temperature on her body and would have been able to get a better estimation of what was going on. But that didn't happen, unfortunately. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I, know. I, I don't. Okay. It says 645 time pronounced was 645 AM. That's important. That's a good benchmark right there. Oh yeah. Carrie's agreeing with you. Carrie Livingston. Yeah. Take note. Garth was called home from the haunted mill early. Right. So if that's true. Yeah. yeah. And he was up and he heard a thump. So sad. A peaceful, serene thump. Right. Exactly. With a smile on her face. Sorry. I think the time pronounced 645 is interesting. Frankly, that's, we know he supposedly called EMS at uh, or nine one one at at six a.m. So six forty five. Put that in your um, um, timeline. Carrie Livingston is believing that she was murdered after midnight. I love it because everyone has their thoughts. Um, yeah. Well, so w yeah. When was Alex Cox's car found in the parking lot? I don't remember, and it. So they say it was found at the parking lot, but I'm wondering if that was a ping error because, you know, pings can sometimes be a, a sort of a, a big bubble instead of an exact ping. They got his exact pings for when he was burying the children, but maybe it, it wasn't exact in that particular. I think it was. I'll tell you my Friday is for speculation I theory. I would love your Friday is for speculation. Well, and I, have, I have two. I have two theories. Can I give two? Two theories? Yes, of course. So I'm done. Speculate we, away. We know Cheers. that we know that law enforcement suspects that it was Alex that tried to shoot at her, mm -hmm. um, you know, and missed. And he knew her schedule. He oh. knew that she was coming home from enrichment night with her frozen, with I her frozen casserole for dinners. And you know, we know that Tammy said in that Facebook post she almost threw the casserole or whatever it was she had her, her enrichment meal her. at the gunman. Yeah. He clearly knew her schedule. He knew that she'd be arriving home outside. So it wouldn't surprise me if he 
knew more of that schedule. Mm -hmm. And if they realized the gun wasn't the right way to do, there is a part of me that has wondered if Alex kidnapped Tammy, as in she was coming into the house and he grabbed her and he took her to the church or maybe she was coming out of the church. I mean, I don't know. That's one theory I have that maybe she passed in his car. He was parked. He did it. And then he dragged her into the house, you know, and didn't get That's her in bed. Really great. And then, theory. and then Alex was a much stronger than Chad. Alex was much stronger than Chad. Right. We, we saw that through carrying the tire. Uh, Alex lifted the Jeep tire to put it in the, um, storage while poor little Chad rolled it, um, because he couldn't lift it. So if Alex handed Tammy off to Chad deceased, it would make sense to me that Chad would drop her. So that's, that's a very interesting theory. Yeah. That's one theory and it's not talked about a lot. So I'm glad to share it here. The other theory um, is if he knew that all his children were gone, you know, that Garth was working at a haunted house, whatever he could have invited Alex in to kill her. It but, is a big risk to kill her in the home. Right? Mm -hmm. So I, I like your theory because your theory removes her from the environment. Yeah. Oh, poor Tammy. I mean, her his car was parked in the church parking lot. I mean, what no, was that, that that's, doing that's a, there? Did, did anybody say when that was? Was anybody in chat able to pull that up? I, I just don't have the ability. There was definitely a timestamp on that. There was, um, yeah. I can't. Yeah, think of it yeah. Right it's now. In, uh, I think it's in the probable cause. I don't know. That was about Charles. It's somewhere. It's it's somewhere out there. Well, in the meantime, I want to say that one of our wonderful uh, listeners, actually, I think it was somebody on TCU True Crime Underground, sent me this book. Tammy wrote a series of books called Tiny Talks. It, I'm not LDS. I'm not anything. I agnostic. But um, she wrote these with Chad and they were all about uh, how to um, educate your children about, you know, questions that they might have um, about the LDS church. Let's see, how does she describe it? She says, um, mom, I just remembered I have to give a talk in primary today. Have you ever heard this terrifying sentence on a Sunday morning? Such a phrase can suddenly create considerable tension on what should be a peaceful Sabbath day, but the solution has arrived. So to help others facing the same dilemma, Chad and Tammy, let's face it, Tammy, has compiled a year's worth of tiny talks that directly correspond with the 2002 primary theme of the temple. I'm going there someday. So they, they, they describe, you know, in, in very simple terms, day after day after day, uh, what the temple means, what it's about. And there's a whole series of books. I think it's very sweet. It's got really cute uh, um, drawings that go with it that somebody did. There we go. Tammy was a very uh, devout LDS woman. She describes um, kind of what's going on and then gives the scripture component to it next to it. And the, the chapter and verse gives a visual aid that you can go and look up. I think it's very sweet. I think it's Yeah, I agree. Lovely. It is very sweet. The next time, here's a here's an article. Let Tiny Talks save your sanity. Mom, I just remembered I have to give a talk in primary today is a terrifying sentence in most LDS homes on Sunday morning. Yeah. Lucian has arrived with tiny talks. The next time your six-year-old says that dreaded phrase, you'll be able to tie everyone's shoes, comb their hair and go to church on time and have your child give a meaningful talk. Yeah. I, I find it interesting. Well, this is my favorite picture in the whole book. And Chad Daybell, I think that Tammy wrote it and Chad threw his name on it. Me too. Authors Tammy and Chad Daybell have written dozens of interesting temple related stories. No, I think this was all Tammy. She was a librarian. She worked with children. Oh, it's the same picture that's on this, the, the ad there. Yeah. 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 She was very, very dedicated to literacy. Also, yeah. her name appears first. <laughs> Even in alphabetical order, Chad would appear first. True. Good point. You know, and, and I doubt that Chad would ever allow another author's name to be first unless they were actually the author. Yeah. So I think he threw Chad Daybell on there just to... <laughs> 
there's a picture of them with their little children and Chad still looks like a frog. Oh, let me just keep that up. I'm going to remove this so we can see that better. Um, oh, yeah. Liz, thank you. Uh, thank you for everyone that is hitting like, and I want to thank, uh, I want to thank peppered with leopard again, the shirt I'm wearing, but also for their donation tonight. I want to thank Leah Clayton, Richard Lucas, Liz twice. Thank you so much. Lynette Barnes revenge. AU, thank you for joining us from down under. Um, oi, 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 Ozzy, 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 oi, oi, oi. Yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> Uh, forgive me if I forgot someone. I was writing them down. And I'm so grateful that, Larry, you joined us while away. Larry Woodcock. Thank and you. And I'm sorry to hear about the loss of JJ's birth mother. It is. It's very, it's very, very sad. tragic. Yeah, very tragic. Um, I want to point something else out about Tammy. Um, you know, I always pointed out about Tammy when we talk about her, but she, she was a victim of, mm -hmm. um, partner violence, you know, intimate partner violence really. And it's odd because he, Chad may have done it. He may have had someone else do it. We don't know, but he plotted it. He decided it. And, uh, as we've discussed in our podcast and many other places, there's history, a lot of history of emotional abuse throughout the years. Absolutely. A lot of history of emotional abuse. That was very clear that he manipulated her and uh, used religious power, religious abuse, all sorts of things. And um, I think that's really important to point out because in an abusive relationship, it is always dangerous, even if it is simply emotional. I mean, maybe, maybe he had hit her other times and we don't know. I don't know. But from what we can see there was definitely emotional abuse. And in the end, Chad uh, is the one who, you know, chose to kill her, his wife and mother of his children. And, and in my opinion, had been thinking of doing it for years. Yeah. And been thinking exactly of doing it for years. How many years did he predict she was going to die? This wasn't an overnight decision. No. Right. Um, this was something he'd been thinking about for quite some time. So I guess, you know, um, it's always important for me to talk about domestic violence and intimate partner violence. And obviously we can say, well, of course it was, but I think it's just really important to point out if someone isn't abusive to you, they will always be abusive to you, mm -hmm. you know, and emotional abuse is abuse. And in the end, he did something very, very violent and chose to take her life. So rather than divorcing her. Right. And letting her live her life with her voice. Yeah. Janelle Little Bear, I am going to be writing you an email soon. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote Janelle an email. It, uh, she responded a few months later and I haven't written you back. And um, I want to talk to you. Thanks for joining us. Janelle As a mod, I appreciate Janelle's insights in chat. She frequently makes comments in chat that are very insightful and, and informative. And I really appreciate that. You yes, and for those down in the know, chat. <laughs> oh, look at and the, and this is what I'm. This is a great example of one. For those that don't know who Janelle Littlebear is, she just said he did not talk highly of his wife and groups of people. Janelle knew Tammy personally. Yeah. Janelle Janelle knew Melanie Gibb. Janelle knew uh, she was even in the Janelle. Uh, there was even a point was it was in the love story where Janelle picks Melanie Gibb. Up. Oh, it's in the police interview. Yeah, I didn't think it was in the interview. Story. Melanie Give mentions Janelle Little Bear saying that uh, the police were asking if Chad had a thing for Melanie Give, and she said, I don't think so. But there was this one time he was picking me up from the airport, but luckily Janelle Little Bear came with him. Yeah. So, uh, you know, yeah, we, we appreciate your insight into and what you bring, Janelle. Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Janelle's husband, Sean Little Bear, has an interview on our channel. And um, that's sad to hear that he did not talk highly of his wife no. and groups of people. That's actually heartbreaking to hear. I, I have not heard that before. So Sean's interview, Sean Little Bear's interview is the gift that keeps on giving. He, he really explains a lot. He really uh, was very open and forthcoming. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Thank you to the people who joined tonight. It is late. 
Uh, it is so late. Thank you. Thanks for being with us as we started late. Julie, thank you for your amazing research and doing this so last minute. I talk uh, so fast because we got to get through it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. People got to yeah, sleep. This was incredible. This was incredible. <laughs> thank you. Um, if everybody could please uh, genuinely remember to like this video and then subscribe. Ding. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're going to have membership soon on our YouTube channel, but for now, all, all, all you need to do is click subscribe and then click the little notification button. Oh, and very important. This is a squirrel moment for Lauren. Very, very important. So it is 10 a.m. or 10 p.m. Pacific right midnight. now. Midnight. Midnight. I did not think it would go this way. 1 a.m. on the East Coast. <laughs> Earlier today, thank you, Scott. Earlier today, um, I posted something very special and it was a premiere for 9 p.m. because I thought that we would conclude an hour ago, Julie. And so <laughs> this video, this video Sorry. is going to redirect to a premiere that's already premiered on our channel. And it is something that I mentioned I was going to share last week, uh, last Friday, and I didn't. And someone even wrote and said, where's that video? Oh, is that Jess. The Jess? Oh, yes. she's, Jess she's, Pierce. A, she's so lovely. And her writing is so, so beautiful. It is. Jess Pierce um, is an incredible woman. She actually did an interview for our channel, an exclusive interview. That is the most viewed interview on our entire channel. It's the most viewed video it's riveting. on our channel. It is. It's riveting. Jess Pierce is a friend of Brandon Boudreaux and was a friend of Melanie Pulowski. And she gives us insight into what it was like for those surrounding this. Um, Her husband was a business partner of, Ch of, of Charles. And yes, and Brandon, and they hid Brandon after the attempted murder on his life. Yep. It was very traumatic for her, I think, to contemplate that one of her dear friends could possibly be a murderer, you know, allegedly, and that another one of her friends could possibly have been dead. And there was some implication, Jess and I have talked about it, and we know this, but there was some implication that her life was also in danger had to do with the business and insurance, but yes, there was a possibility they were going to go after um, some things. And, and she was very, very scared. So legitimately so yes, uh, she was in the midst of a crime spree yes, that ended up completely. with two serial killers. She knew yep. Lori, she had met JJ and Tylee. So she is still processing everything that's happened to her. We still keep in touch. Jess and I do. And she understands that what we are at hidden true crime is criminal psychology reinvented. And she shares with us a lot about what the trauma has done. And she processes it a lot through her beautiful writing. Yeah. And so thank you, Libby. I admire Jess and hope she's forever safe. Um, yes. And Lynette, that was a hell of an interview. She says, so uh, this should redirect to another poem that Jess sent me. Jess sent it to me the, the day, the anniversary. It was about, when was it about a week? It was about, about 10 days ago. ago of the day that JJ and Tylee's remains were discovered on Chad Daybell's yard. Jess processed that uh, day with a poem about um, disassociating something she's been really struggling with through the trauma. And it's a beautiful poem. It's a dark poem. It's, you know, I say all this in the intro, so maybe I should just be quiet. But um, this should redirect to that. It, it premiered about an hour ago. And I would encourage everyone to watch that. So to listen to that, to watch and to listen. And thank you to Jess and to others who are sharing how victims are impacted. Victims and survivors are impacted by crimes. So, yes. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. And to everyone tonight, thank you so much. I will be posting those other photos and things we did not cover as well as your PDF forms on Tammy Dable in our Patreon. Thank you everyone for being here tonight. Thank you to Julie Holden.